union was saved by the immortal heroes at Gettysburg. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. Hello, exactly. The Battle of Gettysburg, what an unbelievable I mean, it was so much and so interesting and so vicious and horrible. Yes. So beautiful in so many different ways. No. It, it represented such a big portion of the success of this country. I see now. Gettysburg, wow. There's I go time. to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania to look and to watch. Come on, man. And uh, the statement of Robert E. Lee, who's no longer in favor. There is no time. Did you ever notice that? No longer in favor. Come on. Oh, my God. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. <laughs> no. They were fighting uphill. He said, wow. All men and women created by the Go, you know the, you know the thing. There is no time. That was a big mistake. He lost his great general. Bullshit. That and uh, they were fighting. Never fight uphill, me boys. But it was too late. <laughs> That's actually what he said. Election 2024. You did this to yourself, America. Let's move on. From the Gettysburg Museum of History Studios, high atop Baltimore Street, in a maximum security facility complete with... History Studios, high atop Baltimore Street, in a maximum security facility complete with central air. It's AG Today. Hi, this is Darren. And Mayor from the Civil War Breakfast Club podcast. This is Dan Casella from the No Pollution of Cowardice podcast. This is Wade Motts from the Gettysburg Foundation. Hi, I'm John Rothman. Hi, this is Bo Brinkman. Hi, this is Joseph Fuquay. And you're listening to Addressing, Addressing Gettysburg. Guests. <laughs> you're, listening to, you're listening to Addressing Gettysburg with Matt Cowery. Uh, don't ever go in America, got talent. You won't make it. <laughs> Did you say Abe Lincoln? Bullshit. The top of the list. Oh, yeah. You're listening to Addressing Gator today. I love this podcast. <laughs> But it was too late. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. He said, wow. He said, wow. He said, wow. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. Dibbich schmibbich. I said more ham. For people that bad at Coke Care. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, to addressing Gettysburg today. And oh, Bethany, am I refreshed? Are you? Yes, how are you? I am d- uh, slowly dying. Yeah, it's so sad. I'm so refreshed. I wish you were refreshed like me, but yeah. you're not. You're, no. you're not. I an ear you're, infection. Yeah. I decided to. You're unfreshed. Yeah. What happened? Now you, last week you were getting over a cold. Yes. So I this went, week you have an ear infection. Went to the doctor and he sa- looked at my good ear and said, well, that one looks red like you may have an infection. And then he looked at my other ear and he goes, oh. Really? Yeah. You have an ear infection. Pus everywhere. Well, he said, you know, you don't normally as a doctor get grossed out by things. Oh. <laughs> he said your ear is really Oh, gross. really? Yeah. Your ear was so disgusting that your medical professional... Told uh, me how gross it was. Said he couldn't handle it. it. Was so gross. And what's funny is it had only started to hurt like a half hour before that. Really? So like I don't understand what the problem was. Uh, well, I mean, uh, I it, couldn't tell you. It probably popped. Ew. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Probably did. The infection popped. Do you want to look? Ha- no. I want to look at. I mean, it, I, can, I don't have one of those can, uh, aeroscopes or we can whatever they call them. Put it up at the camera, and everyone can look. Just zoom in on the camera. Yeah. Yeah. Let everybody yeah. see your pussy ear. Yeah. <laughs> so you're taking medication for <laughs> it, I'm ear assuming. Eardrops. Eardrops. Mm-hmm. So Pill hear. and eardrops? Yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh. That's a bad one. Yeah. yeah. So I can't hear. So. Is that true? Mm-hmm. Out of Be the prepared. one ear. Yeah. 
Be prepared. So my good ear is actually the one that I have trouble hearing out of normally. So but you have a bad ear normally. Yes, this one's supposed to have a hearing aid. I don't know, really? Heard. Yeah. What? what uh, how come you don't wear one? Uh, it's expensive. Yeah. And I'm poor. Usually the it's expensive explains the rest of it. Yeah. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. And so you uh, you decided not to get one. But I've never noticed you. I'm I'm always the one going, what? Huh? You I never read do your that. Lips. You're a lip reader. Yes. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Yes. Do you know how the number of things, I mean, people who know me very well know that they need to go like this. Yeah. When they're talking. Right. What well, here? Let's let's try it. What am I? What am I saying to you? Ready? Go fuck. Oh, wait, hold on. Nice. <laughs> wait, what that was, was that? Nice. It's not working as a bleep. Oh man, it's a good thing I didn't say it all the way. <laughs> Holy crap! Let me just change that real quick. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Now we go. Go yourself. <laughs> no, what am I saying? Really? I can hear you. No, no, no. But I'm gonna bleep it so you can't hear. What am I saying? You can hear it. You can not through the microphone, but you can you'll hear it through the room. But you've got okay. Ready? Here we go. Bethany, you are. What did I say? Bethany, you are a wonderful person, and everyone is so lucky to know you. Oh my God, you're so full of yourself. I didn't say that at all. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you know the number of times I have accidentally heard something? Oh, I bet. By reading lips across a room. Like I love you. No, olive juice. No, like some like. One of my friends that I work with, <laughs> Elephant Shoe. I found Elephant out. Shoe. <laughs> I, it Elephant doesn't look shoe. anything like I love you. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Olive juice. No, no. Olive juice. No. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, I found out that he was leaving before he told anybody because I I read his lips from across the room, and he was like. How did you know I was leaving? I was like, I heard it. And he's, I wasn't. I was like, I saw it. You saw it. I saw it. Yeah. So how bad is your hearing in that ear? Like, I mean, is it like 80% gone? What? The problem is I only hear certain levels of mm -hmm. audio. So normally everything that is at a certain pitch, mm -hmm. I hear more than anything else. So typically, I get that. All I hear out of that ear is. The bass. So do you hear like All lower long. or higher? That's like what I hear higher. You hear higher. Gotcha. Hmm. Hmm. So hmm. when we go to like La Bella and we're in that room, I'm and reading it's your really, lips the entire yeah. time. Yeah. I see. I, I've never gotten good at reading lips, so I'm trying to learn how to do it so that I stop going what, what, huh? And then I do what. The other problem is you're not paying attention. I don't really to what care what anybody's saying. Yeah, <laughs> I know. that's uh -huh. the big. <laughs> <laughs> Call it multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I have to listen and care. Yeah, you Come don't on. actually. I can only do one thing at a time. Give a crap no, what I'm saying. Hey, really. my niece is on here. Hi. Oh, hi, hi niece. Katie. So we, well, I'm so refreshed, and thank you for asking why. I'm so refreshed, Beth, because uh, we went down to Harper's Ferry this weekend, Cynthia and I. I know. This I'm was, super jealous. This was my birthday. I mean, my Christmas present to Cindy. Uh, and uh, we went and we stayed at the Stone House Inn. Let me tell you about the Stone House Inn. It is a stone house. <laughs> okay? That's just yep. the beginning. <laughs> so we, uh, we go there, and it's right, it's right in town, right? So just when you get out of those National Park buildings, it's a few doors up, and there it is, the Stone House Inn. And uh, I've walked by it for years, you know, I've seen it before and, uh -huh. you know, and that, you know, I don't go in, you know, just walk into these places and there's, you know, a, a piece of paper on the door with my name on it and I open it and it says, um, you know, the instructions on how it to says, get in. Please and don't come in here. What, yeah. Please, you know, mm -hmm. we've refunded your money. <laughs> stay away. Um, <laughs> we've taken your money. Please. So no, there's like an, a, a code to get in the lock on the mm -hmm. front door and instructions on where the room is and all that stuff. And. I go upstairs to the room, and it's so cool because the room was uh, an addition to the house uh, yeah. that the owner said today he, he built it, you know, onto the house, and it's called the new room. But I recommend, first of all, I recommend you stay at this place mm -hmm. when you go to Harper's Ferry, and 
get the new room. Yeah. I haven't seen the other room, so just I not I, when we want to go. Huh? But just not yeah, when don't, we want to yeah. go. But check you with know, us other first because we we like that room. Well, yeah, because <laughs> it's got a balcony, this beautiful balcony. And, uh, you know, there's chairs on it and you can sit and you look out and you see Maryland Heights across the river and you look down and you can watch the sunrise uh, in the gap in the mountains and everything. Uh, it's just beautiful. If, if only it was a little warmer, but we I forced yeah. myself to stay out there in the cold. I gave Cindy a blanket and because I just want I just I'm so I miss there. sitting outside, you know, mm -hmm. but it's really quiet there at night. You know, everybody complains about Gettysburg rolling up the sidewalks at eight, nine o'clock. It's like never been to like Harper's seven, Ferry. Eight Five to eight is like yeah. everybody's closing. Yeah, what? And it's a ghost town. Then there it is, is a not a town. person on the street. Not a person it's on the street. Very quiet. It, it is. is very quiet. Gettysburg was not like that last night. Really? There were a ton of people out. Of course, we always miss the fun, right? <laughs> and then uh, the, the 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 thing that is loud though is the train coming through. Oh, I bet loud. that sounds wonderful, though. Well, I love no, that sound. <laughs> no, no. I th see, I don't mind trains. It is loud. I don't mind it trains if the track you're near is a straightaway. Oh, it was a but curve. But this, there's a curve here. Oh, so you heard, Arr! yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, when the train is two miles long, <laughs> do you know how, and it's going slowly because it's going through, you know, a, a, around a curve and it's populated and everything. And they're going into a tunnel. You know how long that screech? It sounds like the tortures of the damned. It is, and and you're sitting there on your porch, and you're like, oh, listen to the beautiful sound of the river. And then all of a sudden, you hear, yeah, like sort of, and then the, and then all of a sudden, the screech and the, and we're just like, oh, and it just the trains, and how they often keep. How did it go by? Very all the time. <laughs> Because <laughs> there's there's an Amtrak line, yeah. so two Amtraks would come by, uh, and then what's the other one? Uh, and th these weren't even the commuter lines; they, they had sleeper cars, you know. Uh -huh. So like, and then um, what was it? There were several freight. It was mostly freight trains. Mostly freight, yeah. Um, and then you know, so you have the B and O railroad, um, which is the one coming from the west that goes along the Potomac. But then you also have the Shenandoah, mm -hmm. which is, comes up, and and they both you know. And so at one point. Uh, while a 40 mile B and O train <laughs> was screeching on through town, the uh, the Shenandoah one was coming up, and I don't know if it's actually called the Shenandoah. It might be Winch. I don't know what it is, but it's on the Shenandoah River. That's coming up, and he had actually stop to wait for the other one to go into the tunnel, and that was cool to watch yeah. him start up again and get those engines going and pull his load into the uh, into the tunnel there. So. The, it was interesting. And then this morning after breakfast, we watched uh, uh, Maryland uh, helicopter rescue somebody a from. A dog. Well, a person first person and then a first, dog. And then a dog. From the uh, Roaring Remember, Rapids. I didn't see yeah. the person, but the dog I did see. Yeah. It's you funny. Were out there. And the owner, Chris, who's an awesome guy, we talked mm -hmm. with him um, yesterday morning and today. Um, he was saying that, you know, he just kind of shook his head at like, how he's like, people don't understand the power of that river. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we got to talking about that last night because we went walking down by by the point where the Shenandoah and the Potomac meet, and there's a sign there that says, you know, hey, don't be an idiot, undertow, etc. Yeah, right here are rapids. Yeah, and uh, and I was like, how do people? Why do you need a sign? Like, how dumb can people be? How do and you know? And they rescued someone. Enter helicopters. Yeah, and then the next day, <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> but really, it's like we we were, then we got to talking about like the power of nature and how people don't understand. Mm -hmm. I guess you go to a recreational area and you assume it's safe, you know, because we, we were talking about people getting sucked out uh, uh, at the beach, at the beach mm -hmm. you know, and, and you don't think of it and, and everything. But I don't understand how you go through life and not realize everything that's dangerous around you. Maybe I'm a little over. I mean, well, I think you and I were raised very similarly where the Catholicism has made us <laughs> feel that if it's going to happen, it's going to happen to us. Yeah. So we just assume that if somebody's going to be pulled out by the undertow, it'll be me. It'll be us. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. <laughs> well, either way, it was it was really a relaxing time. It was great. It was the I didn't bring my laptop. Nothing. You know, there was a no work rule, and we talked about work a little bit. Yeah. But not a lot. No. Cindy got a uh, national yes, park. I'm a beach national I park saw beach that sweatshirt. I want one of those. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. And uh, and you know the uh, the other thing uh, I noticed. I commented to Cindy as we were walking around. I said, you know, uh, we should have brought Bethany along. Yeah. I know. I know that that's what you were <laughs> this thinking. This would have been a lot more fun with Beth because then she could yeah. clean the room afterwards. <laughs> 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 no, I said, uh, 
I said that uh, I noticed that different parks attract a different crowd. Oh, that's 100%. So a Civil War true. park does not necessarily attract the same type of people. Mm-hmm. And I was uh, surprised at all the hipsters that were at Harper's Ferry and how entitled those little bastards are. <laughs> there was one point we were carrying our bags, okay? <laughs> carrying our bags up the sidewalk. You, you've been to Harper's Ferry, right? Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. you know you go, up, you go up the main street. It's a hill. There's a sidewalk with a railing. It's all very compact, right? Mm-hmm. So they have a, a railing to protect you from the road and uh, this tiny little sidewalk. And I see a group of three or four entitled 20-somethings mm-hmm. coming with their... You know, with their goofy hairdos and their face piercings and stuff. And I go, well, let's let them go by first because there's four of them and everything like that. And we step aside and they walk by. They didn't even like acknowledge, like look at us and nod their head. They didn't say thank you. They just went as if we were, we as if we're obligated to have let them go. But not only that, they walked as slow as they possibly could. Like we're standing there holding everything. Right, like I have, and they're just moseying on down the road. Like they don't care to be. at all. Like I'm, I'm sitting there waiting for them to go, and Cindy's got like my bags, her <laughs> bags, you know, a couple of bottles of wine, because <laughs> I hurt my back, <laughs> and uh, uh-huh. and I'm like, you know, do you guys are you thinking about her here? Do you notice her? <laughs> She's buckling under the weight, and it was it was something else. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Were you wearing <laughs> Were you wearing that sweatshirt that you have that says "I'm a Sherpa"? That may have confused. <laughs> Never <laughs> fight uphill, <laughs> me boys. Never exactly. fight uphill. <laughs> exactly. He knew. He knew. Yeah. So, but it was a great place. The, we went to uh, Shepherdstown. We went to O'Hurley's General Store. Did you ever go there? No. You so got. I go haven't there. been there in a long, 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 long. You have to go there. You do. You know, we should all take a day trip down there one time. We were talking about doing something like that. Yeah, that, that was fun. O'Hurley's was really cool. Yeah. Just all this cool old stuff. Yeah. We, I got a, a lantern. Why are you laughing? Is that where you sent me the picture of the sign? No, no, that no, was at the restaurant. That was at the restaurant we okay. ate at called the Rabbit Hole. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, uh, that used to be called the Secret Six, but now it's called the Rabbit Hole. Okay. And that was very good, too. I would uh, highly recommend the secret it. six questions. Yeah, the secret six questions <laughs> lens. That's the yeah. what we're going to open a restaurant called the secret six questions lens. <laughs> okay, say that. That's hard to say. Secret the six secret six que- questions. Wow, lens. I can't even do yeah. one. Secret secret six questions lens. Lens. Try it again. Secret six questions lens. Yeah, that's not easy. No. So um, we went there and we ate and it was good. Both times I had a uh, a hemp salad, which was delicious. I'm like, where do you get hemp? What was the, what was the hemp in the salad? Like, it what was, was hemp it? leaves. It was leaves. It was oh, leaves. leaves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, and lettuce, and mm. uh, bacon, and it was a keto salad. Actually, they had it as a keto salad, huh. and it was uh, with a lemon mint vinaigrette. Right. It was freaking awesome. And I got it both nights in a row. I was lemon like, I vinaigrette love this. is very good. I had never had it before. I love anything lemon, and it was yeah. great. So that and the first night we were there, our waiter was insulting me, and it was fun. We had fun with him. Uh, Colby, Corey, Cody, Cody, Cody. Yes. Yeah. (laughs) So when you go down there, you got to check out the Secret Six. I'm sorry. uh, No, no, it's not Secret Six anymore. It's uh, what is it? The Rabbit Hole. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The Rabbit Hole, and you got to stay at the Stone House Inn, and try to get the new room. Because you'll get your balcony. It's the only one with a balcony. So make sure you get the new room. But always check with us first. Always check with us first. What are they okay. saying that you're laughing at? Um, I think Grant. Grant's in. <laughs> who, who is he today? How flows, or Loaf House. Loaf Lo- House Loafer. <laughs> okay. Um, Housed. No respect for elders anymore. That's right. No, exactly, Loaf Houser. No respect for their elders. Uh, or anybody, or or a beleaguered woman carrying a bunch of uh, suitcases, you know? <laughs> a beleaguered woman. Speaking of age, can I rant? Said, wow. Uh, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so I have to tell you what happened what? recently at what? the oh. Gettysburg Foundation. Okay. We hired Was everybody some like, somebody walk in and they're like, Gettysburg, wow. Yeah, yeah. that's going to be our new theme. Uh huh, Gettysburg, wow. Yeah, we decided. I think this should be it here. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. I there think you go. I think that's what you should. Just... I think Gettysburg Wow was probably Gettysburg Wow. You know, Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill, me boys. Yeah. Never fight uphill. I got hairy legs. 
David Malgi was like, we should totally do. <laughs> wow. I mean, he's so cute. <laughs> David Malgi. It would be it would be a good marketing campaign. Gettysburg. Mm-hmm. Wow. Gettysburg. Wow. But anyway, we hired a bunch of new people. OK. Yeah. And they're all 12 years old. No, but you really like they're in their twenties. Yeah, they're but in their early twenties. They're, they're twenty three and younger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, how bad is it? It's Your bad face. because I spend most of my day having to explain explain how to yeah normal <laughs> cultural references. Right. This is called a shoelace. Yeah. Oh, no, cultural references. Cultural references. Okay. I had to explain who Cher was the oh other day. God. What? Yes. And zero. Point zero. Exactly. And then so. And then like, w- did you get like, would you get in arguments with them? No, or? I'm just, I'm just like, mm-hmm. and then whenever I say something, they're like, I wasn't born yet. And then I want to punch them in the face. And then. And then they blow up at you. I just hate you. And I hate your ass face. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> but I, but the funny part was the other day, she, uh, one of the girls that I work with. She's so cute. She's like, you make a lot of noises when you get up and down. <laughs> and I was like, you can, you can stop. Now, the end result of that was I made a hair appointment at the day spa and had my hair colored today <laughs> to cover the gray. Are uh, you going gray? Oh, yeah. I haven't noticed you going yeah, gray. It, it was getting pretty bad. I, I do notice of, it's darker now, though. I have a lot of sparkle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... So what I did this morning, or yesterday morning, we went, all the three of us went somewhere, and I went, now honey, unbuckle your seatbelt, <laughs> take it down, there's a big step. <laughs> and she's like, and I'm like, this is how I treat my four-year-old. Right. So obviously, <laughs> I thought it was I appropriate. I just hate you, and I hate your ass face. So are they... Um, what are they, what, are, what jobs do they have? Like basic, like clerical stuff? Like, you know, no, no, no. How um, many tickets the one do you want? girl is our, um, comm specialist. Okay. And then the other is in charge of video and the other is in charge of social media and the other bunch of, um, I don't know. You hired them. <laughs> I don't remember. But anyway, they have legit. Right, you know, actual job. So they're just out of college. They're just out of college. Okay, they're like five, and it's really hard (laughs) for someone like making you feel old. Is what you're saying? Yeah. Well, welcome. Uh, Yeah, yeah, it doesn't get any better. No, it gets worse. (laughs) So I mean, we'll have to ask our guest what it's like because he's substantially older than we are, and so (laughs) no. But I will say this: I was thinking about this the other day because Cindy and Debbie, tell me if I'm not wrong. He didn't unmute me. Oh, oh, oh there you are. Yeah. Listen, I know what I'm doing, okay? <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Debbie, go ahead. Tell her she's wrong. No, I'm not Just wrong. tell her. Because Cindy. Yes, this Cindy. Marie me. Claire over here has, <laughs> like, she is one of those, you're in your 40s, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. I thought so. I wasn't sure. Substantially into her 40s. No, you're not. <laughs> oh, yes. Really? No, you're not. No, she's no. younger than I am. Okay. <laughs> So I, I, but I was like, I really like, she has the, she's got it down. Do you know what I mean? Whereas I still feel like at 38, I'm still, I act like I'm 12. Well, so like I'm when almost 42 and I don't feel like I'm a real, I know, but yet. she's got yeah. like this maturity. Like I'm, a, I'm a, I'm in my forties and I know what life is about and I'm in my late thirties and I am like, where the f- well, it's so but, I but don't even Cindy, know how to use yeah. it. I don't even know where I'm going. But Cindy has two kids. Yeah. One is 22 and the other is 19. I'm, so she's been through the ringer, you know, like <laughs> that's not easy raising uh, two kids to that age. So she's calmed well, okay. down. Well, then I will say this. I'm always very impressed by you. But oh, she's she's well, also like you. got her life back now. So she's kind of like, ah, oh, yeah. what do I do now? And it's like, who am I? Yeah. 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 It's nice. I, I, I respect you a lot. Oh, thank I, you. I'm yeah. with Bethany. I second that. Oh, oh listen wow. to this, well, ladies and gentlemen. This is so nice. But this is I mean, nice. I don't think you guys are making your, yourself sound like <laughs> you don't have a clue what well, you're doing. Well, I don't. That's not they, true. My staff bought me a new phone case <laughs> that comes with a strap that I then can wear around my body because I lose my Which phone. Which I noticed so you don't have the strap. 
It's in my purse. <laughs> <laughs> I took it off because I kept getting it. Last time I kept getting it tangled in this cord. Oh, uh, so yeah. Yeah. Okay. They bought me a strap because I can't function as an adult and know where my phone is on See, a moment See, that's not true, day. though. I, I leave mine places. I, I leave water places. I, like everything, mm. I just have to walk. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? I definitely do that. That's, that's nothing. I'm just telling you. I think you're great. I think it's all an internal feeling, and I think you're great, too. So, oh, well, thank you. you know, That's beautiful. Just having a regular old love fest over I here. I know. Yes. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Um, <laughs> We're loud. Come on now. Sydney <laughs> and I have already planned our future. <laughs> uh, we did. We know what we're doing. You got a yeah. big business plan that yeah. I, I we hope gotta actually talk later. works. Yeah, yeah, because I think I have some, I have some ideas. Yeah, we gotta talk. Yeah, later. good. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> See, all of you love would, me. Would Cindy have done that? No, she would have had it prepared and ready to go. Here's me going. More people are dying in Gettysburg. Duh, duh. Yeah, that's no, true. Like I, I, Cindy does prepare, and it makes me look bad because she's like, she's I got all the it. stuff for that thing that Basically, we're talking about, we're and all I'm like, I'm what? Boring. That's what that. No, is. no. we're that's not saying no. you're boring. I think no. you're wonderful. I would not believe you were wonderful if I thought you were boring. More people are dying in horrible ways in Gettysburg, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Dun dun. Exhibit was, A. But that was hilarious. <laughs> 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 He stood as erect as I am now. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, I love the love fest. Thank you very much. I'm so basically what you're saying is I chose well. Is what you're saying? I do think yes, so. I enjoy. I agree. So really, it comes back to me having good taste <laughs> in Mary people. Mary mother. Nice. <laughs> Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is this. Uh, I think I've told you everything I want to tell you. That's true. I did. And uh, uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, Stonehouse B&B, go check out, even if it's for the day. You stay here in Gettysburg uh, and you go down there for the day. It is such uh, so worth a day trip to Harper's Ferry if you've never been. I, I've loved it ever since the first time I, I went there. Cindy, you love it now, yeah, too. I do. It is just such a great town. And if you want to stay overnight, it is going to be uh, such a treat for you to stay in the new room at uh, the Stone House Inn. Yeah. And you can say, wow, Matt and Cindy stayed Gettysburg, here. Gettysburg, wow. Uh, Gettysburg, <laughs> right. You could say, Gettysburg, wow. Gettysburg, wow. <laughs> I got to tell you, but my friend Mark from Jersey, he's one of the smartest guys I know, loves Trump. And uh, he he texts me um, the other night, and he's he said, you know, uh, never fight uphill. That's how he starts it. Never fight uphill, boy. Me boys, never fight uphill. And I just wrote back. I said, I've been cracking up about that, you know, ever since. And he goes, no, oh, he doesn't really love Trump. And so he's, you know, but he's a fair-minded guy. So he's like. Is there a quote that he's m mixing up? Yeah. You know, did Lee say something like that? And I'm like. I don't know Lee ever sounding like a pirate and talking like a pirate, you know. Never fight up heal me buddies, you know. Like he is it and and I'm, I'm like I'm try, I've been be, racking my brains trying to think of what he could have confused that for. He has to be thinking about Yule. He has to be. So he's uh, okay. The whole thing of take the That's hill and and not actually doing it. So Yule's saying never fight up hill me yeah. boys, but he's but just I throwing it off. I think he got confused, and I understand. And who's the general that he lost? His great general that he lost. I think he's talking about Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Prior to the yeah. battle, but he's just oh. so all that goes That's in the head, and then as it's coming out in the diarrhea of no. the mouth, it's just correct. Like, yeah, I'm just going to throw it all out there. Now, in his defense, <laughs> okay. I, I, I very rarely do this, but yes. I will say this: okay, the year that he came to Gettysburg right. and got the tour, he had gone to several other battlefields and gotten tours like all smooshed up into like a week. Okay, mm -hmm. and so I don't doubt that he has some of that all kerfluffled in his head. What should have happened, though, is that there is people on his team that should have. But he, right. did, but, but he speaks mean, extemporaneously. Yeah, yeah. He, doesn't, gotta know. he yeah. doesn't do that. Yeah. He doesn't plan that. That's stuff. the problem. Right. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. Never fight uphill, me boys. But it was too late. Gettysburg, wow. He said, wow. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never wow. fight uphill. Because wow. I, re I remember it was at the same time. America's dead. There were a bunch of different, <laughs> like, people coming to Gettysburg. Like, suddenly, all of a sudden, Gettysburg was the place to be sure, during yeah, that election yeah. cycle. Oh, yep. And and I remember saying to my boss at the time, I was he like, said, wow. why are, 
Like, I understand why we're going all out mm-hmm. for every single one of these people. I totally get it. Come on, man. But they are going to be so civil warred out yeah. by the time they get to us that I almost feel like we should be talking about something different. Right. Like, so <laughs> I can't even imagine. Yeah. Have you been to Kitty Wake? Yeah. <laughs> or like have talked about civilian experiences or something. Kitty Hawk. Wait, where, where was the Wright brothers? <coughs> Kitty, Kitty Hawk. Hawk. Kitty Hawk. Thank you. <laughs> Kitty Wake. That was the street we rented a house on at the Jersey Shore. Kitty Wake. <laughs> Kitty Wake. Yeah. That, wow. Wow. My brain is starting to. I'm starting to Donald Trump food my brain. But I just. I Kitty Wake. Go to the Wright Brothers in Orville and Redenbacher Wright and see Kitty Wake, <laughs> where they where they flew the first plane, the first helicopter. <laughs> you know, they rescued people from the river. I saw It'll it. It'll be said, nice well. to see if they, it, interesting to see if on this election cycle they come back. Like Who? they did. Like the the Trump Brothers. and Biden. And, oh, yeah, it would be interesting. I don't know. Yeah, last year, I mean, last time they did. I think Trump needs to now. I think he needs to uh, get a Redeem proper himself. lesson. Yeah. Because, I mean, Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. Gettysburg, wow. It was Caitlin Brown. Caitlin did? I believe so. Uh, Because I think it was mentioned in the president's visit in Gettysburg lecture. I think so. I remember that. I think think that's what he said. Yeah. Somebody somebody said he sounded like a a surfer pirate. Surfer pirate. I got hairy legs. Yeah, surfer pirate. Well, anyway, that's that's uh, the state of the union here, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take us to a commercial break, if I can remember where our, everything is. And you know, you go away for a few days and you forget stuff, right? But don't worry, I remember. Uh, we'll be right back, and we'll come back. Our buddy Peter Carmichael's going to be on. We're going to talk about scarves and the CWI summer conference. We'll be right back after these words. Want to promote your Gettysburg business? Send an email to sales at addressinggettysburg.com. Wow. Wow. Gettysburg, wow. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. Wow. Break one, Debbie. Hey, Gettys Nerds. 2024 is shaping up to be a fun year for Addressing Gettysburg, and we want you to join us. Our Get Out of the Car Tour is put together and led by licensed battlefield guide Lewis Trott kick off in April and will be available at a later date for the first time ever on our YouTube channel. Speaking of our YouTube channel, Gettysburg National Military Park's Winter Lecture Series is available exclusively over there from January through March. So be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss a single one. We have much more in the works, so be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and now for free on Patreon. We hope to get to meet and spend time with many of you this year as we spread the word about the Battle of Gettysburg and the Civil War. Help us teach the masses that history is not boring. Movies and documentaries about history are spread out across the internet, and their quality is often suspect. History Fix delivers curated historic programming to your preferred device using their website or branded apps. Join History Fix for movies, documentaries, short films, and how-tos. Addressing Gettysburg podcast fans receive 20% off their first annual subscription. So what are you waiting for? Sign up at www.historyfix.com and use promo code ADGBURG. That's A-D-G-B-U-R-G. Want the freshest cup of coffee in Gettysburg? Then visit Bantam Roasters, formerly 82 Cafe at 82 Steinware Avenue. They roast all of their coffee in-house, and they have a full coffee bar to keep you caffeinated during your trip. Visit them at www.raggededgerc.com for their menu and shipping options for all of their freshly roasted coffee. Use promo code HANCOCK for 10% off your order in the cafe. This episode of Addressing Gettysburg is brought to you in part by me, audiobook narrator Mike Scott. Narrator of Savas Beatty's Bloody Autumn, the Shenandoah Valley Campaign of 1864, and, unlike anything that ever floated, The Monitor and Virginia and the Battle of Hampton Roads. If you are an author or publisher interested in having your titles produced as audiobooks, or even just in learning more about the process, give me a shout. You can find my contact info on my website, mikescottvoice.com. That's mikescottvoice.com. 
and Civil War Trails. It's the world's largest open-air museum, and they offer over 1,300 sites across six states. Drive the Gettysburg Campaign turn by turn, paddle to Frederick Douglass's birthplace, or hike to remote earthworks and artillery positions. Visit CivilWarTrails.org to request a brochure and explore their interactive map. Follow Civil War Trails and create some history of your own. You're listening to the Dressing Gettysburg Podcast. We hate abbreviations. Welcome back to AGT. Okay, where's the writer? All right. Uh, this segment, ladies and gentlemen, is brought to you by the Civil War Summer Conference, Civil War Institute Summer Conference. Uh, it's June seventh through the twelfth, twenty twenty four. You know, we've been talking about it for weeks now. I oh, sorry, I can't wait for it to uh, to come. It's I look forward to it every year. Yeah, definitely. I really do. I look. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of uh, like minded people walking around, drooling. Over the historians that are walking amongst them. Yes, I mean this meet is your the th- heroes. You you get to meet your history heroes, <laughs> and this is the thing. Like you don't. It's not like uh, oh, you know, Mister So and So or Doctor So and So is on the stage and he's given his talk, and then we whisk him off through the back door, and you can't access him or anything. No, he gets he walks down the little steppies in the front, and then all of a sudden people swarm him, and and they don't run away, and they talk, and it's a it's a wonderful time. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun. Some of these wonderful people that you're going to be able to see are Harold Holzer, Ronald White, Scott Hartwig, Elizabeth Leonard, Aaron Sheehan Dean, Jim Brummel, Jonathan White, Jen Murray, and more. And of course, one of them is uh, our guest, Peter Carmichael. So contact Civil War at Gettysburg.edu or 717-337-6590. Last week, I said, uh, mentioned that you heard about them on our show. Uh-huh. I said, I don't think you get a discount, but let them know anyway. And somebody did. You do. And you do. You get 10% off. No, 15. 15. Whoa. 15%. 15% off according to Car- And listen, Absolutely. If, if Carmichael says it's it, that's, that's as good as gold Can right you there. maybe slow down with the phone number there, man? Well, I'm going to give it again. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, you give it fast the first time and then slow the is? last time. Oh, well, yeah, that's how so I do it. So people can be prepared. <laughs> Get their pens out. Yes, get those pens ready because it's coming again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, or here just, it comes just right hit now. rewind. Right but now. you can do it online too. Seven one seven. Well, you know what the the thing is. Here's the uh, address online: uh, www.gettysburg.edu/civil-war-institute/summer-conference/slash twenty twenty. Who's going to remember that? So send them an email: civil war. Just Google it. Thank you. CWI, <laughs> Gettysburg College. Okay, but cool. that's rude. I don't want to be rude and say just Google it. I want to give them something. So send them an email, Civil War. In, your, in your favorite Edu. browser, type in a Civil War Institute. Make sure you put 2024. At, at Gettysburg, 2024. College. At Gettysburg, at Gettysburg, Gettysburg College. College. Yes, at Gettysburg 2024. College. 2024. Make sure you and have 2024. Right and then every, that, that way everybody knows. Yeah. Okay, so let's just get Civil War at Gettysburg.edu or Google it. Or 717-337-6590. That's 717-337-6590. And get your 15%? Get yeah, your 15% say, off. you got to mention addressing Gettysburg. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I wish I, I remembered that. And I think now that I think about it, I think Ashley did tell me that. Yeah. yeah. We'll give you 15% too, man. So now if you already signed up and didn't know that because I didn't tell you that, can they call back or, or, or should I not have said that and you just keep the money? Uh, it could be challenging. Mm. Yeah, it could be challenging. Could be challenging. Next year, folks, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I'm so yeah. sorry. You know what? They Good deserve job. your money. Why so. don't you just give them a discount well, and sign up for your well, podcast? Why don't you just shut your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he thinks. I, well, I don't. I, I hate the way he I'm thinks. I'm thinking of the okay. customer, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, listen, Pete Carmichael is our guest, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, you know him from uh, the Civil War Institute. He's written many books. Uh, War for the Common Soldier. Uh, what was the other one? <laughs> Biography of Willie Pegram. Pegram, a book that's on right. Last Generation. Edited a book on and you're wor- Ari Lee. And you're I'm working on what the world needs more than anything: a new book on the Battle of Gettysburg. Uh, and what's the angle on this one? Do you this have a one is title? seven individuals, three Union, three Confederate, and an enslaved. Start at the end of Chancellorsville. Work our way through the campaign. Of course, sort of go back and forth in time, but also connect them to their family and their personal lives. It's a very as everyone says, my Gettysburg book is different. And of course, I get suspicious when I hear that. 
but I'm going to say it's, it's a different kind of book. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, no, I'm enjoying it because it's pure narrative. It's it's unlike anything really I've done in a long time. Now I'm going through the uh, schedule here for uh, CWI this year. Yeah. Uh, the welcome by you, which you know that makes sense. Nice. Yeah. Yes. But then we go. Let's see. We see you again. What are you doing? The next thing you do well, is I, like the oh the next the Hicksford raid yeah, is the I next day. That. The Hicksford raid. What is that? Everyone's dying to hear about that. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I came across this raid in 1864 south of Petersburg through Sussex County. It was a raid that uh, went awry. It was under Governor K. Warren mm. to destroy part of the railroad, of course, headed south out of Petersburg, the Weldon Railroad. Uh, they accomplished that, but on the way back to Petersburg, they discovered that uh, some of their men who had straggled and were just drunk as hell, that uh, Confederate guerrillas uh, not only captured them, but executed them. And this is a, not for uh, young audiences, but I'll say it anyways. Earmuffs. Uh, they uh, earmuffed this one. They cut off their penises and stuck oh, it in their mouth. Jesus. And Jesus. yeah, it's brutal Give stuff. Give me a warning. I'm sorry about he that. He did. He said good. this. But I mean, a, a real warning. Like, you That's know, say, say it again. Uh, do you want me to say it? Yeah, say it one more time. They cut off their pe- <laughs> There we go. And put it in their mouth. <laughs> and, uh, and so, of course, the, now word of this spread, obviously most of these soldiers did not actually see that, but they learned of it. And when they did, they just let loose on Sussex Courthouse. They burnt the thing to, to the ground, a number of buildings. Uh, of course, pushing women and children out into the, the winter night. Uh, a lot of slaves ran away as well, and there's uh, some reports of rape that occurred. Uh, so My it's goodness. a brutal affair, right? And so yes. I went down there to learn more about the details and could find really no one who lived in the community now who knew much about it. They all told me that I needed to go to Petersburg to mm. really learn about the siege. So I've done a lot of deep digging on it. And it's fascinating how it was reported, and that's what I'm interested in. Because even at the time, you would have thought that Confederates would have used this for propaganda. Yeah, right. definitely. Man, but in fact, you can't find really any mention of it at all. When they describe Union soldiers, it's just that they're a bunch of just like horse thieves and going in, taking you know cattle and stealing from people. That's how they describe the Union soldiers. They're just plunderers. They don't make any mention of them uh, engaging in this sexual violence, right? Yeah. And I think I have, you probably have a good, I probably guess as to why the papers didn't do it. Any good guesses? Why? Decency? No. <laughs> no, I don't have why? a guess. Okay, I, my Put guess, the idea out there? Well, my guess is that if Johnny Reb is sitting in the trench in Petersburg and you know, he read about these women in Sussex County who were sexually assaulted, he's going to say, I might, going need, home. I might need to get myself home to yeah. take care of business down there, make sure that my uh, family's safe. Obviously, that's pure conjecture. But it's the only thing that makes sense because uh, they, the fact that it was not included is truly shocking. I'm what I, kind of thinking it's weird that we don't hear about it now. Yeah. Like this is the well, first we, I've ever heard about it. You will mm-hmm. now. You will uh, now. And, and, yeah. and, and I, mean, I spent uh, really years going down there and talking to people. It's the kind of research that one enjoys because you just find a little shard here and there and trying to piece together this story. I'm not suggesting that there was a conspiracy. There was not. I mean, though that, of course, plays well. But today, yeah, sure, everybody loves that. <laughs> but it's not. I mean, Governor K. Warren himself had such a bad relationship with Grant and with Meade uh, that plays into this as well. So there's high politics going on within the army. There's public perception of it in northern papers. They, of course, downplayed actually um, the destruction that Union soldiers committed, and instead focused on these Union raiders uh, and tearing down the infrastructure of the Confederacy. Huh. So. Sussex County, it's a place that's been forgotten. The two largest employers in Sussex County, ready, are the Virginia State Prison System. Mm. It's poor as hell, and uh, it's a sad place in many ways. And it's, it here's, raises the question, right? Uh, when history has been scraped away, when it's been erased, there are no trenches. Mm-hmm. There's one marker. Right? And, and I, again, I talked around, I would write about and I'll speak about it as well. But I had some great conversations with people in Sussex who were like, what? I've never heard this before. This one guy said to me, he said, I grew up here. I knew the history. He said, if someone had told me this as a kid, I'd be saying, damn Yankee this and damn Yankee that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I never heard of it before. So, yeah, it was cool. It was a, yeah. I, I was hoping I could get a book out of it. I just couldn't find enough. Well, the uh, it's going to be interesting, and you strategically placed it right going into lunch. That was smart. Wasn't so yeah, so hopefully lunch. they're not serving hot dogs. <laughs> what happened? You don't like the hot dogs at Gettysburg College? No. All right, I'm not missing. No, because you, you're talking about. Man, I'm telling you, they're cutting off their. P- 
I know. So, if there is an opportunity <laughs> for a bad joke, you got to see it. Callow. And I was God waiting for it. three minutes to get it oh, out. Yeah, oh, I was wow. like, oh, man, it wasn't even that funny. I wonder why. Uh, all right. Who are you looking forward to see? You got a lot of interesting people. Well, of people course here. I can. You know, it's like my children. I, I know. don't have a well, favorite. Well, they're not your right? children. These just, people are I, adults. Listen, I'll say this. What I'm interested in about this conference is that we never do themes, but we have a number of talks that deal with atrocity, and Aaron Sheehan Dean mm -hmm. from LSU, who has spoken at the conference before, he's super smart, very articulate, he knows how to give a good, accessible uh, uh, talk, and he will broadly speak about the rules of war uh, and how both sides, and to varying degrees, tried to moderate and control the violence that they were unleashing, uh, not just against armies, but also against people. It's a really, really smart book. The Calculus of Violence. It's yeah. the book mm -hmm. of the conference. So he's kind of at the very core of what we're doing. And then we have some things that spin off from that. Ethan Raffuse. I don't know if you all know Ethan. Mm -hmm. No. Ethan teaches out at the, oh, Jesus, uh, one of the, at Leavenworth. He teaches out in Leavenworth. He's a PhD um, from, Herman Hathaway was his advisor who's passed away. Uh, Ethan wrote a very good book on McClellan. Mm. Uh, that people should check out. He's also doing a staff ride for us as well. Nice. And one of the challenges, of course, is to be able to get folks who are to the West, and I mean really to the West mm. of the Mississippi. Just to be blunt, it, it's costly for us, yeah. right, especially yeah. travel and such. So a lot of really good historians in our field, it's hard for us to, to just to afford them. And so I'm thrilled to have Ethan back. He was here in my very first CWI, which was 2011. 2011 so his first time he's yeah. been back he's good there's a, there's a lot of interest we went through the um um schedule uh dave and i uh, i see some are highlighted yes yes we went through them and i and Did you highlight mine or uh, oh, i put an x through yours. stars by mine maybe no. what well, it's yeah. stars, stars yes yeah. <laughs> no 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 well now, well now that Glitter. you uh told us what the hicksford raid was now i want to interview you for that um, because that's interesting, and and I I am and, seeing and a it theme has a, here. It has a Chamberlain connection as well, and it's not a very because he because he had you know, he was shot in the penis. <laughs> that's the connection. Uh -oh. It's got a little bit of an obsession now, and I was the fool to yeah. bring it up. I really actually blame myself. Yeah, I mean, I mean one reason why you we know his education well, we, level. We, we do, we, stood as erect as I am now. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, we connect very well because, of course, we have sophomore humor. Right, but I get this, man. I don't bring it on air. Not that I need to be dignified. It's his show, and he goes at it, which I, I get. I'll just say this. Chamberlain says something about the rape that will surprise a lot of people. And we should note that Ron White, who just wrote a recent biography of Chamberlain, yeah. I think it's a good book. He focuses on the post-war uh, mm -hmm. post period. White's going to speak as well. So I'm excited yeah. to have yes. Ron White. Yeah, we, we put him on the list of people we want to interview. You for should. That. He's yeah. a... He is incredibly yeah. smart. He's, his stuff on Lincoln is fantastic. Do you do, do you think what are, what are your thoughts on Chamberlain? Like is is he <gasps> is he overdone? So, I'm sorry. Well, I, I mean, be, be as nice. honest as you feel be comfortable. Nice, well, I think that most of us that are serious about this, that we can sort of put aside all the hyperbole about Chamberlain and yeah. the fact that he gets he's like overexposure, like Caitlin Clark. I mean, she's a phenomenal basketball player, and there will come a moment where people are going to be, I'm sick of her. She gets all the attention. Hell, that doesn't take away from the fact that she is a Ooh. baller. You don't even know who Caitlin no, Clark is. Man, the, what world do you live in, man? About. She is the greatest woman's basketball player today. She broke Pistol Pete's uh, scoring record, Pistol man. Pete. Pistol Pete Maravich, right? It's a full circle. Last time Absolutely. you were on, we were talking we talked about, about Pistol, Pistol as well. Yeah. So I'll just say the same thing right. about Chamberlain. His contributions to the union cause are undeniable. What he did, particularly during the, basically what, the last two weeks of the war, phenomenal. His fighting at Lewis Farmhouse, yeah. his fighting at White Oak Road, his fighting at Five Forks. Mm -hmm. Everyone gets so focused on this place, mm -hmm. which was, again, an incredible contribution. It's true. After the war, yes, his ego got a little out of hand. Okay, <laughs> so be it. But that still does not diminish. No. The guy sacrificed his body for a cause. Yeah. He had he no business getting back in the Army after his Petersburg wound. He had every reason to stay home, back up in Maine. And what did he do? He went in. He went back in as well. So you know what? I just for like people him. who poo-poo him... Shame on yeah, you. Yeah, I just like him because I think he's really cute. He is. Well, he's a college professor. Man, we're all cute. All right. We're all, right, all that's crazy. true. It's, we're right. all. That's, that's just how true. it goes. You do oh, have gosh. a fabulous head of hair. Thank you so much. You really do, Just keep it coming. Yeah, I just like it. Yeah. I've been sitting here looking at your hair. Oh, yeah. I can't keep my eyes off. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so wait. You, you didn't do what? When I was signing a book once, and I felt so sorry for, for this man, and he turned to me, and he said, his wife was right there, and he just humiliated her, and he said, well, she'd really like to run her hands through your hair. How do you respond to that? Well, I didn't say yes to it, of course, but I thought, man, well, this then, guy's going to have a long ride right home. home. A yeah. long, long ride right, home. Right, yes. yeah. And I'm sure she was mortified. You she son was of a bitch. Was. You embarrassed me <laughs> in front of my hero, Peter Carmichael. <laughs> no, but uh, the reason I ask is because do you think that uh, there is um, an overcorrection? Uh, you know, we. The, in the Gettysburg world, we kind of want to um, right the misconceptions of the movie oh, right, right, right. and the Killer Angels. Right, right, right. Um, and so people think Chamberlain single-handedly saved the Union line. And a, a lot of people are like, uh, yeah, well, yeah, Chamberlain, okay, but he was one of a million people that had everything to do with everything. And it's like, but that's kind of not the point. So in other words, they, they kind of crap on Chamberlain in order to pull up everybody else. And and do you think that that's, that's like true. it's kind of unfair, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. The first thing is I, I felt like that voice you just did was like Donald Trump, but Donald Trump stoned. <laughs> like nice. a stoner Donald Stone Trump. Trump. That yeah. was good. I like yeah. that. No, I think you're exactly right. I think that's actually... That's Never a really... fight uphill, me boys. <laughs> Never fight uphill. I told you I had CVS call me today about that. Yes. I, I was wondering about if that. they were calling anybody but around I'll here. I'll just, just real quickly say, I think that's a really important point that you made. Thank you. What I've was it? Serious. And it's that. It's that there's this pop culture associated with Chamberlain from the Killer Angels to the movie itself. And that becomes a point from which people then criticize historical Chamberlain, which, as you said, mm -hmm. really makes no sense at all. And yet, I think that we all can appreciate the fact that what keeps, you know, this place going is those kinds of debates. And, you know, I just... I'm not interested in them personally, but I'm glad that they're happening because I know those, that's the entry point for so many people to then maybe think about these things a little bit more, yeah. more deeply, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. Like, I want to understand better how Chamberlain dealt with these very serious physical wounds that he had. He oh, did. absolutely. Right? How he contended with that. I mean, how he I rode get, a I, horse. I mean, how did you ride a horse? How did you, how did you do any of those yeah. things? So, I suspect very few of your listeners have ever read Passing of the Armies. You read Pat All of them have. Mm -mm. All of them have. Have you read it? Uh, yeah. Nah, I no, read, I read. I read me the title on the yeah cover. But, yeah, but, and it's but it's. It, I found it to be significant that he wrote about that last what two weeks of the war. Yeah, he didn't mm -hmm. write. He didn't yeah. publish anything. I mean, he did publish some things about Gettysburg, but he wrote a book about that. Yeah, and I, again, I'd encourage people read it. Mm -hmm. Yes, again, he gives himself. <laughs> at times a little bit oh, more yeah. attention but he makes this beautiful and brilliant defense of warren and how as we all know warren was so sh just shamefully treated by sheridan at five forks shamefully and although warren put himself in a position that yeah one one little misstep man he's done and that's what happened to him I think uh, six questions. Lens says the pushback against Chamberlain is becoming a bit much. Nuance is needed in understanding the man. I agree. Is that Avery? No, uh, no, no, no. Michael Lens. Oh, Michael Lens. Six, six questions. Yeah, Avery Lens is going to be there too. At, yes, uh, Avery the, will he, be there. He's yes. going to be there. Yes. He's, I didn't know he was at Monocacy. He just Actually, got a permanent I position. That. I did know that. And, and congratulations a, and, to him. And a Gettysburg alum. Yeah. Gettysburg College alum. Yeah, and that's uh, that's great. And so, uh, but yeah, I think that the the, the thing with Chamberlain is unfortunate because it, a lot of people seem to be kind of they get they almost get angry like i think what i think is interesting is like actually learning the real story of the 20th main here and how it wasn't so perfect the way it was executed like, like every unit like right yeah and and i think like the movie and the book uh, and even Ken Burns' uh, section on Gettysburg, those are all great, as you say, entry points um, for people to get interested in. And, and then it's up to everybody else who knows better not to get angry, not to insult them, not to denigrate Chamberlain, but to say, well, actually, here's what really happened. And to me, I don't know, I kind of find it more interesting yeah. to think that that was an accident. Well, yeah. yes. And, and would you also say that these debates are sort of reflective? And again, I don't want to become the tired, boring academic, but 
Is this too a late. thing that's too late? <laughs> <laughs> I'll set you up too nicely for that. Yeah, that was but, really But bad. is this, you know, the kind of thing where it's like men arguing about, you know, their sports teams and their favorite mm-hmm. athletes. Like, that sort of becomes that kind of ridiculous that's, thing. I think well. that's what it is. It's part of that. Uh, part of that. Because I well. couldn't care less about sports, but I'll argue this stuff all the time. Just right. for the sport of it, ironically. Right. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right, right. Well. The I, Sykes. Remember the how... Sykes. Um, Hoptak did John his, Hoptak. his yeah. uh, fantastic historian. Yeah, John did his uh, winter lecture on Sykes, and he and I had talked about that because, you know, he's kind of one of those people that people you know don't really realize who he is. Right, right, like, absolutely. Know, um, he's one of the generals that was here at Gettysburg, whose <laughs> last name starts with an S. <laughs> you know, and everybody's not quite sure where he fits in the picture. Right, right. But like, even he was like. People were, what was he doing in Gettysburg? Like, even the ones that nobody even gives a crap about, except for John Hoptak. Yeah. Still have people that are going to be. Yeah. And then and then they, they do did. a lecture like John did. And suddenly it's like, wow, this guy's pretty, pretty interesting. Pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's funny how things work. So you, can, you did a lecture, which I, uh, I thought was really good. Yeah. And what the best part about it was you, you made reference to me like two or three times. I knew you would like that. <laughs> that I was always... the only point. I always pander. I don't even media. know what you were talking always about. Pander. You can't even remember. <laughs> it was about John Partington, the that's Iron right. Brigade soldier. That's right? right. And really about his wife and his as wife. well. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's it. No. No, I, I thought that was good. And uh, did you watch it? I have watched it. Yeah. Did I, you I, notice? I, I don't like to watch myself. I understand that. Did you notice the artistry with which I shot the end when you were when you were? I was. I, I don't remember if it was a slow right, zoom right, in or out. Right. No, I, I couldn't get that far. Well, because you, not just you skip to just the me. end. I'll skip have to, to the end. And take a skip look to at the that end as well. But it was good. It was one of my favorites. John was one. Of my, I'm not going to go through the whole list, but yours right. was one of my favorites. Uh, b- besides the fact that you mentioned me three times. Maybe Don't four. do that. Why do you do that? Well, you know, it's it's an interesting. The guy is a fascinating person, Partington. I mean, it's oh, been, I thought you were talking oh, about yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like, that, 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 that is a given. That, oh, okay. that is, all right, all right, yeah, 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 you're right. That is, right. That is, that is a well, you got to tell us who are you. Interested all right, so here's in, in, okay. And now, you'll be and able again, to come too? no. Yes. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. she's yep. coming. She's part of the crew. Ashley sent the email to the foundation. I sent it out to everybody. By the way, by the way, I don't want to overstep here, but you know, I've noticed over the years, like I. I can cover more if I have more help. Yes. Uh, and so, like, I think I have a crew of, like, 32 people this year. Is that okay for the lunch cards? Absolutely. Yeah, they're really like 32. that. It, it dining well, service. No, but it might be closer to, like, it's under 10, but it might be, like, over 5. These are all the kinds of questions you run through, Ashley. All right. Uh, I'll talk Ashley's to Ashley. Ashley's got it on lock. Yeah, she's absolutely. Um, all right. But no, so who am I looking forward to? Yeah, I yeah. am looking forward to Ronald White's uh, Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain yeah. uh, talk. Yeah. That's yeah. Friday night. Right. Right. Um, and then let's see here. Uh, Link, uh, Harold Holzer, Lincoln and Immigration. Th- I'm interested in that as well. It is. A time, it's, a time it's, book? It, it is. Exactly. Time book is exactly. Yeah. So it'll be good to get some H- insight. Harold's always a great speaker. Yeah. I mean, he always gives a really good talk. Um, let, interpreting race at Civil War battlefields. I'm interested in, we're, I think we're going to try to record that. Because, you know, you have the concurrent sessions. It's yeah, one of the concurrent yeah, sessions. Absolutely. And so we can't, of course, well, go to the, all. I, th- I think the Lincoln and race will be an interesting debate because I tried to position people that might have some oppositional mm-hmm. views. And so... You know, I think, and I'm not speaking now of the panelists, I'm speaking in general of the Lincoln field, uh, even the, the academics, that there is this disposition to always defend Lincoln. And especially when it comes to, was he a racist or not? Which is one of the most utterly absurd questions yeah. that we can really ask of anyone. We all have racial attitudes. And mm-hmm. now how do we position racial Lincoln's racial attitudes as a man who was also a politician, as a man who had to project himself as a moderate, I mean, I'm not certain where he stood, but I do know this, that he was crafty and smart and being able to be flexible, depending upon the audience that he was speaking to. And a to. man at that time. He was definitely yes. a man of his time. I mean, I suspect, you know, he was very clear in other moments that he thought that it was wrong that enslaved people would deny the fruits of their labor. He never, ever, and I'm sure that I could find it in someone maybe someone in your audience could, in which he maybe leaned a little bit towards some idea of black equality, but I don't think he ever really came close mm-hmm. to that notion. If he did, he, he kept it to himself. Maybe he told Mary Lincoln. And you also, yeah. you hear a lot of like Hello, uh, Trump, you know. Confederate Hello, apologists, they'll say, you know, uh, well, he did it. He only freed him as a way to beat the South. Well, okay, so what? They shouldn't have been enslaved in the first place. So I don't care why he freed them. 
as long as he freed them. Well, but again, it's a failed notion or a failed understanding of the war because even though that was Lincoln's private you know, conviction, and if he had done it in 1861 and lived true to that principle, what would he have accomplished? He yeah. would have alienated most Northerners. He'd have blown up the Union war effort. The rebellion would have succeeded, and they would still have had slavery. So that argument that Lincoln, for some reason, did not live up to his true convictions, thus you know, the move to end slavery was a cynical move. It's just a fundamental misunderstanding of the war. See, that's a thinker right there. I that's a historian. Love they that think. Because one of the things that I always argue about the Civil War is that people come from a high school mm. history class idea of what that war was. Right. Where North good, <laughs> South right. bad, Absolutely. everyone in the right. South owned slaves, yeah. everyone in the North right. loved black oh, people. Oh, yeah. And, and no totally one in the North chopped off equality. people's. <laughs> Good and, God almighty. <laughs> and you have to remember that there were so many nuances to yeah, all of absolutely. this. Yeah. I think what yeah, you're yeah. learning in history class is only a small portion, and right. you're being flagged from... Oh, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Debbie. You had me on mute again, didn't you? I did because there, there's too much noise in the back when I have the speakers on. It's an echo, so I, uh, you know... Go ahead. Turn those down. Anyway, I was going to say that um, the other week in the museum while I was volunteering i literally had a guy walk up to me bethany and pretty much put it exactly like you said he was mm -hmm. like the north was good and the south was bad and i was mm -hmm. like way oversimplification but sure if that's where you're at. when you are <laughs> trying to teach an entire 150 years worth of history in a semester's <laughs> worth not of even class like how many times in your high school history class did you make it to vietnam Never, Not you know, often. so yeah, nope. that all of that history has to be fit into a chunk, and you've got to pick and choose what you are going to really get into. Yeah, and, and, and also think about leading up to that point, you have to make history accessible and understandable. So then, these easy generalizations that people learn when they're in elementary and junior high, you know, you can't engage those greater complexities. So, you know, they hold on to, as anyone would, to those early lessons in history, and so as you continue to make that march forward, then theoretically you would start to add layers of knowledge and start to, you know, see things in a more complex way. I, that's the goal. And the other that, one. And I think for the most part, people actually do, although we are at a time when it is unfortunate, it's a story of Northern saints mm -hmm. and Southern sinners. Yeah. And it's my hope that we can get some more balance to that. And yet we should all again be able to acknowledge in a way that we did not or could not maybe 10 or 15 years ago. Listen, the Confederacy, <laughs> it's a good thing they were defeated. Yeah. The right side won this war. Yeah. Let's not forget that right. ever. But in saying that, again, we should not demonize, I think, the Confederacy, and certainly we should not demonize those enlisted men who fought for the Southern cause and did so not because there was a hell of a lot of choice down there, right? Mm -hmm. I, I heard, and I won't mention a name, but I heard an academic once say that those many of those non-slaveholders who fought for the Confederacy, that in a sense, that... They had a moral responsibility, and they failed in that moral responsibility when they decided to fight for the Confederate Army, which was just an obliteration of what we all believe in as historians to take people on their terms. It mm -hmm. was so stunning and so shocking that I didn't know even what the hell to say, except that it is an absurdity. It is utterly empty of any serious thought, because we know what? Most of those non-slaveholders who were deeply racist, who probably did believe in slavery, but if they in fact decided they didn't want any part of this, where are they going to go and right. what are they going to do? Right. Sit on the front porch and say, I'm taking time out from this war. I Sorry, hope you all boys. don't mind. I'm yeah. sitting this one out. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, it's Pass not me happen. the moonshine and we'll kick back. I think there. people not people tend to not realize the difficulties of their own lives yeah. today. And if you just realize how difficult it is to be uh, true to what you believe today... Uh, and then apply that to any other time, not just mm -hmm. the Civil War, any other time. Mm -hmm. It's far more complicated. But, but like you said, Bethany, like it's North good, South bad, and that's what we're taught. And and everybody's a monolith. And you know, it's but that's not how life but works. I, 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 yeah. I, I really think it's getting better though. I wouldn't. I, I, I agree. I, I'm much better. I don't think people are getting taught in those simplistic terms like I, they. Agree. No, I agree. It's right. it's it's starting to uh, open the, up a bit. One of the things I would wish for every teacher is an experience that I had. I was at New Hope Charter Academy in New York, and yeah. so all of my students were black. Oh yeah, nice. And teaching the Civil War yeah. 
And coming from Clarion, Pennsylvania, yeah. where there was one black person, <laughs> right. and trying to come overcome my own right. ways of thinking about this whole thing, and then trying to teach what the Civil War was to a room full of black children who had never heard of it before. Right. Right. And that, it was I don't understand that. Fascinating. It was a fascinating lesson to me. Yeah. I, f I wish every teacher had that experience. Yeah. I would I would wish that for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's it's a it's it, a really well, complicated I, war it is. to study and it's the study of it is also very complicated. Absolutely. And you pointed to what and, you know, I think we all, in a sense, either lament or, or hope for a different situation that our audiences here would come from a, a wide array of social and racial backgrounds. And mm -hmm. we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. But we should always remind ourselves that people that go to historical sites, they typically do that as adults because they did it as children with their families. With their families, yeah. With their families. And this is as much a class thing as a racial thing as to why... We don't see more people of color out here and why we don't see a lot of poor white folks. You're a mm -hmm. poor white person, I suspect. You know, you get a week no, off we, for vacation. No, they come here. Well, there are, I think, lower class. I would agree with that. But th th the point is, is that I, sometimes I've heard, well, look, black people don't even appreciate their own history. They don't come to the four sides. I've heard that a lot. Mm -hmm. And again, I, I get where that's coming from. I think it's a fundamental misunderstanding mm -hmm. as to why the, the tourists. And again, the National Park and the Foundation, they sort of twist themselves <laughs> to try to get mm -hmm. all kinds of people here, which I admire. And I'll just say... They should do whatever Harper's Ferry does. Well, well, here's how they try to do it. And, and they're falling in the wake of what most museums do. They believe that if a visitor can see himself or herself in the exhibit, uh, in mirrors. the story, right, yeah. then you'll come. So they have something here at the park in which they are highlighting one or two Latinos who fought here. And I said to them, listen... Half of my family is from Ecuador. Ecuador. Most of them have come to the States. I said it is actually patronizing to my family. I'm just thinking Thank for my family. It is patronizing. My people from Ecuador ec recognize Gettysburg is important. They don't need to see a Latino right. here to know I'm that. I'm so glad. Okay, I'm so but glad you said this. But that's my personal view, right? No, no, no. But, but, but also, I think it's the sane view. And not that the park is insane or anything like that. But I'm very uncomfortable with these things that feel like pandering. Like, I, I don't... I don't think that people are so simple minded that they need to see someone who looks like them in order to understand and appreciate a story because we're all they, human beings that have the same right. uh, we have the same urges and needs and wants and hurts right. and desires right. and all this stuff. And I don't understand. I never well, understood I think it that. I think it comes from a really good place. I, I don't. think they're doing. No, it is because <laughs> they want to get a diverse audience. Here. No, no, no. So I, I think uh, that's today it comes from when they're doing it. But I'm th the, right. the origin of that way of thinking is not a good place. But, but I will. I will add this, Matt. Look, oh. we know that so many people are interested in the Civil War because they have family stories and family connections. It's powerful. It pulls yeah. them in. So it should not surprise us then that when we see people of color who are going to the Civil Rights Museum, it's not just the story of civil rights, which is triumphant, and it is true that when they do visitor surveys at other sites, they see that people of color often don't like to see exhibits about slavery for a range of things. Now, again, one might say I'm overgeneralizing here, but I'm feeling like I'm on pretty, yeah. I think, firm ground here. So we should remind ourselves, too, that, yes, it is understandable why someone would say, hey, the Civil Rights Museum, that's the story of my people. I think that where, I, I, I'm not going to say that maybe you agree with me. I, what concerns me is that ultimately we need to recognize that all these stories, that they are interconnected and we need to come to appreciate them beyond our own so-called identities. Yes. Right? I mean, I, I, and I think that in many ways we do see that. In other ways, we don't see that. And, and that is troubling to me. It, it is troubling when we say to someone, oh, well, you should be interested in African-American history because you're a person of color. That's an expectation. Or we say to a woman, oh, hey, military history might not be your thing. Hey, but what about the home front? Like, mm -hmm. oh, my God. <laughs> but I still, right. think we're, I, right. I still think we're pushing forward. Listen, most of the Pohanka summer interns that we've had, I'd say it has to be close to 50% now, are women. Mm -hmm. And they're working on battlefields, mm -hmm. right? right? So... There is a lot of change that has occurred, and we should always recognize and, and appreciate that. And, you know, there always will be challenges, but yeah. a lot of good stuff, mm -hmm. right, that has transpired in terms of who's talking about the past. I mean, look at this. 
Well, what well, look at it? this. I mean, not look at you. Look at this. We're pretty cool oh, uh, people. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. By crazy Civil War historians day. Yeah, sure. right. Exactly. Right. right. Uh, oh, in the real world, yeah, not quite. Did you just include me in a Civil War historian comment? <gasps> he doesn't include himself. I'm not, that yeah, shame. I'm talking about you guys, not me. Oh my God. I don't really. I just kind of. Are you going to do tours this year? Pardon? Getting us off track. Are you going to do battlefield tours? Do get out of the car tours? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You you going to do There's one? one this weekend with oh, uh, Lewis? Really? Yeah. yeah. You going to join hope us? So it just kind of depends on. You should come. You should come on Saturday. Okay. Everybody gets a notebook. I am going to Antietam with Scott Hartwig. Oh, that's from CWI. Uh, can I go? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Sorry, guys. I'm not going to be on my own tour this week. I've got a space in my car. Uh, Do you like? (laughs) Oh, you can't. I I have. I have to be hostess with the most. You have to be hostess. Yeah. But listen. uh, So I no. I I I agree that it it makes me uncomfortable to see the the pandering, and I understand why they want to do it. But I I find it to be very condescending to people because it 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 says to me like like what you don't think that other people can. Think and appreciate, like in other words, you, so you're saying you're half your family's from Ecuador. Yeah. If I were to go and visit Ecuador yeah. and see one of their battlefields from the Great Ecuador War of '44, there's a lot of fighting right now. Uh, right, yeah. right yeah. now, yeah. right, yeah. right. See it right off, I off. have sympathy or empathy, I should say, right. Right. for uh, soldiers and the things that compel people to go and fight. It mm-hmm. it fascinates me. It it breaks my heart. It inspires right. me. It does all of these things. I don't care where they're from. Right. I don't care really what their cause was, as even though I may disagree with it. Right. I'm thinking about the individual soldier, regardless of what his color was, or or even if it was a he or a she. Because, you know, like in Israel, everybody has to serve yeah, in Israel, right. right? So I'm just fascinated at the, the balls that it takes to do that. I mean, honestly, it's that simple. Like, how the hell do these yeah. people do this? Like, I couldn't do I it. could do. No, and I don't need... You know, I, if I if I went to Ecuador and they're like, oh, well, we had a, an Irish guy who fought or an right. Italian guy who right. fought or an American who right. fought. I'm like, I'm so oh, interested. yeah, good for him. Right. And then uh, but I want the whole story. Right. I want it all. And I think it's just I, I would, again, caution us from overreaching too much about that messaging. Like, hey, if you see yourself, they will come. And I also don't need to remind us that there have been too many places where people's stories have been pushed aside that were central to the historical story, but they've been pushed aside and now they've been included. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, I just had a conversation uh, with, uh, with a filmmaker, Brian Wade. Do you know him? I do not. So he contacted us and he's going to, we're going to get him on the show soon, but he's doing a, um, documentary on, uh, abolitionists and the underground railroad in, yeah. the, in this area. Yeah. And he had, uh, Deb McCausland on and Scott Hart, uh, Hancock. Hancock and, uh, you know, we've had them, on the show uh, yeah. numerous times, and I love talking to them because they're talking about a piece of this history in the Civil War field that is just, it's to me, it's the whole reason for the war, and we don't hear enough about black history in the war. Right. And and I, I feel like I want the whole story. Right. All right? Right. It, it doesn't make sense to me that all these white people are running around pissed at each other, but we don't know why. <laughs> we don't talk about right. why. Right. And why was it that they were willing to go to war? Why? What, what were what were what was one side so willing to shed blood to protect it for, and what was the other side willing? You know, of course, we say you know to preserve the union and everything, but there was an abolitionist sect of the North that was you know for this all right, along, right, like right, right. leading up to it and everything. Right. So, like, why don't we know more about that? And, and well, I, I I would say that we have. A, a lot of scholarship now on the African American yeah, now during the war yeah. now and in the last ten years. In fact, mm-hmm. I would say that if you look on the academic side, that the war years are almost an afterthought, and that most of the work coming out, most of it is centered on the black experience, particularly emancipation. Yeah. So you know, I, and, and that's great. I mean, we need more studies there. But again, these changes that have occurred, I think we are often reluctant to say, oh my God, like we have really moved the field in a profoundly new and important direction. And I think uh, far too often that we make a case for something by exclusion. It's not dealt with. It's been ignored. It's not been talked about. And I've often found that that's not the case, that there's been a fair amount out there. What was the book? Uh, the guy who did his journey with R.E. Lee. I'm sorry that I can't remember his name, but you know. You mean Robert E. Lee and me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ty Sigley. So yeah. Ty and I had a nice conversation at the Lincoln Forum a few years ago, and 
I admire him for confronting his lost cause beliefs and working through them. And I know people think that book is fantastic. And I have certainly looked at it. And I am not in any way disparaging that journey that he had. But what drove me crazy, and he and I went back and forth, and it got kind of tough, was that he was making claims about Lee that had been and have existed in the scholarship for a very long time. Again, that doesn't take away from what he's saying, except that you can't make this claim of originality. The idea that Lee believed in slavery, really? Because there are a lot of other people that have been writing about that. Right. There's something more to be said than, oh, Lee held racial beliefs that were of the time and he owned slaves. How did those racial beliefs and how did his commitment to slavery fit within his belief in hierarchy that existed not just between black and white, but between men and women, the children and their parents? Like, there's a deeper world there, and we can't get to it when we start doing And I guess I was, and he, I think the audience could tell me, and they saw a real debate. We went back and forth. And <laughs> unfortunately, they didn't get it on camera. I was uh, really just because you didn't I mean, invite me. No, we, we, we could watch the Lincoln Forum. That's a group that maybe you yeah, should. Well, you know? why didn't they have, hire you ever, me? have you ever been out to Lincoln no, Forum? No, I haven't. I haven't. Any we desire? were going to go. We were talking to Harold Holzer after yeah. last time yeah. uh, to cover it like we do yeah. for CWI, but right. I don't know what happened with that. Uh, I know they get C SPAN there as well, but you should. Yeah, well, they don't need us if they have C SPAN. Well, yeah, but you do your interviews. I know, it's a different audience. It's nobody watches C-SPAN anymore. Well, you're probably right. <laughs> <laughs> no, so Ty I don't even Sigley know how though. You would find C-SPAN anymore. Um, you'd have yeah. to have cable. Yeah, yeah. nobody yeah. does. Yeah. Ty yeah. Sigley, when we had him on the show, the first question I asked him after reading his right. book for the interview, I was like, "Okay, I'm. This is the first question I'm going to ask him." And right. I said, "Should historic figures and events be viewed through the prism of the viewer?" Or of the people who lived it. Right. And he said both. And I was like, I don't know how if I can go on any further. And and I actually enjoyed the interview. And I thought he had a lot of interesting things to say. It is an interesting story. But the, uh, the answer to that to me is just profoundly wrong. Like, y it's not both. You can't do it both ways. Yeah. We You can do it with today's view. But you have to be like, okay, we don't think this is right. We would, we cannot do this again. We should not do this again. We must never do this again, whatever this may be. Right. But we can't, I, it's, I have a very hard time saying they're evil, they're wrong, or this or that, or the other thing, because the world at the time, I think that I was watching a Bill Maher thing. He was talking about how Columbus is getting shit on and <laughs> for atrocities that he committed. Right. And he goes, yeah. People back then were pretty atrocious. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like you well, know, people I, did atrocious well, things. I, I'm just re just reminded of what happened uh, at the forum, and and I again I share your concerns about that, and yet I do again see some value in which uh, you're able to juxtapose the differences in racial attitudes, or more importantly, that you see how certain racial attitudes can justify inequality. So there was a moment. In which, and I, of course, I cannot remember what Ty said, but whatever he said, it was kind of an affirmation that, you know, the Union cause was good and that mm -hmm. the Confederate cause was evil because of slavery. And people were applauding. And I said, <laughs> it's earned me a lot of friends in this audience. <laughs> I said, I have no <coughs> idea why all this self-congratulation is going on. Because as we speak right now, there are people in the Congo who are working in conditions that are slave-like. They are helping you, right? With your cell phone. Yeah. And so I yeah. said, when people start to get self-congratulatory and they feel superior to the past, what that prevents and keeps them from doing is looking long and hard at the world that they exist in and the inequalities that they live with and that they don't question. Yeah. And, and that's They don't even know about. Well, they just they, they put their blinders on yeah. and they should then recognize why R.E. Lee could sit at the Arlington House and have this massive estate and say, you know, I treat my enslaved people... Well, I, I and you can understand why he would say that. I mean, he was wrong in saying that, <laughs> right. right? But the point is, is to understand how people can deal with these horrific conditions and that they can live with themselves and how they make sense of it rather than saying, well, Lee must have been guilty or God, he was a horrible, evil man. Or as somebody, a friend of mine said, well, Lee was so smart. How could it not dawn on him that slavery was wrong? I'm like, how can it not dawn on you that your cell phone right now is exploiting people in Africa? Have you thought about that this morning? So Very I, refreshing to hear never, you say that, yeah. We never think about how we are going to be judged 100 years no. from now. My, my, my colleague, I'm sorry, I shouldn't interrupt you. It finished, but my colleague, Kent Graham, who no longer teaches at Gettysburg College, he had a great assignment. And his assignment to the students was, you're writing 
a piece on American society as 100 years in the future or maybe 75 years in the future. Mm -hmm. Pick out something that future generations are going to say. What in the world? How dare them? Yeah. How dare them? Yeah. <laughs> my one student wrote about the corruption of college sports, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> All the money yeah, and everything yeah, yeah, else. Yeah. That was a good point. Yeah. yeah. It was good. Now, I think uh, as far as so were you saying, though, that you kind of agree with Sigily about um, the, 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 judging the past by the way we view things today? No, I think it can have value if you start to look at the questions that the past forces us to confront and that those questions, I think, have applicability to today. History does not repeat itself. It doesn't even really have the same rhythm, but it reminds us history is such a great guide for its questions and what we all care about. Context, context, context. Because if you care about history, you know that there is a moment in time and there's a specificity to that moment in time. And if you start to veer around all over the place, you conflate all these time periods. Here's a good best example of that. Mm -hmm. That the soldier experience is a universal one. Mm -hmm. Certainly there's some commonalities, but there are some profound differences between what a man experienced or woman in Vietnam and what a Civil War soldier did. So that universal stuff is almost always nonsense. But questions, those questions matter, and they do have uh, a certain timelessness to them. Mm -hmm. But they only have true meaning when you recognize the importance of context. Speaking of profound, let's wow. go to the do commenters it. here. Loaf Hauser says, <laughs> and this is probably, this is referring to your lecture. Loaf Hauser, he says, I don't know if Kubrick or Spielberg could have directed those lectures better than Matt Callery, and that's true. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, go. you got the best out of me, Matt. I was pretty shy, and yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, you got it out. Of well, me. and you forgot um, uh, a Republican in the ranks. You forgot the name of that, and I had to bail you out. Remember that? It's yeah. Right, and he's speaking at the conference. I know, and Zach, I saw him. Is, I had yeah. him on again. He's a good dude with uh, Wayne Motts. Him and Wayne Motts. They did one on ha was it Hall's Brigade or Harris Brigade? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. And I said. You know, your buddy P. Carmichael forgot the name of your book, <laughs> and I saved him. Yeah. I was a yeah. reader for that book. Whoa. <laughs> my mind well, is, man. If you're my getting old, getting, P. Yeah, what absolutely. can I say? Absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, who else here? Pete's winter lecture was the best. I listened to that one a couple of times. Very there you nice. go. I love it. Thank you. Lincoln was a man of his time, and we cannot judge by today's standards. That's Dana. Agrees with me. Uh, Ghost <laughs> says, I think Lincoln's views evolved. Like all of us, we change with age and or experience. It's called growing. I, 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 know, I like that a lot. I like Lincoln that a lot, too. Did evolve. Absolutely. That's uh, the Fair. first well profound done. thing you said, Ghost of Sickle's leg. Thank you very much. Well, he's the ghost of a leg. You know, what do you want <laughs> what from do you him? Like, what do you expect? Uh, Benjamin Allen says, the situation is probably a bit different in AP U.S. history. Also, in states like Florida, the curriculum still retains some vestiges of the lost cause. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, then let's see. What else have we got here? Six questions, Lentz. Those stories need to be preserved. You are awesome for having these stories. It's a great responsibility. Wait. Oh, he's responding to somebody. Sorry. Oh, his father. A ghost's father was in the Marines. So he's preserving those stories. That's good. And uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. And it's just a bunch of them talking to each other. But yeah. So have you ever taken a group? You mentioned abolitionists here. Has anyone been out with Dean Schultz and... And I've been out with Dean Schultz, uh, my, my friend and I. He took us out once, but uh, McAllister's Mill, no, I, I, we no, we went up to Lost Avenue. Okay, yeah. Well, McAllister's Mill, as you yeah. all know, right, yeah. is an yep. important underground railroad site. I just took students out there on Sunday. Oh, did you with Dean? Yeah. Oh, oh it was fantastic. He was he's he's great. He is remarkable. Mm -hmm. My I, I took a, another tour and I brought my mom along from Indiana afterwards. Man, she oh, kept really? raving and raving. I was oh, like, he's fantastic. Well, I was like, hey, listen, your son is right here. <laughs> I'm a Civil War historian. I'm getting jealous of an 85 year old man. She's always like, he's so wonderful. Like, yeah. I got uh, I got. By the way, I got your invitation at, and thank you for inviting me. But I had. What do we have to do? Oh, I had to record the last lecture on uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. Invitation mm -hmm. to what? You gave me, you invited me to the Dean Schultz walk. Oh, I did. That's right. <laughs> well, I don't know what he's referring to. I, I would forget about that too. <laughs> yeah, he, but you didn't I respond. I wouldn't claim that. Well, you he's know what, like, Pete? I'm too. Seriously, he plays, I see it after the fact. He plays hard to get with me. 100%. <laughs> All the time. I like that. I have to earn your friendship. <laughs> no. No, it's okay. I, I don't, I don't right. check my emails. Like, it's if you want to get a hold of me in a timely manner, it's a it's text, text message or a phone call. So, why don't you check your emails? Because it's just, I it's can't just keep up. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. So, I have no. to, one day, a thir usually Thursday afternoon or Friday, I, I go through them and. Right. Sorry it took me two weeks to get back to you because I don't always Do keep up. You, now, as a professor, I've always wanted to ask a professor this question. Yes. <laughs> when students email you, yeah. 
Do you have the students that you're like, I remember you, I will answer. And then the students that you're like, I have no clue who you are, that can wait till next week. Well, uh, given that my, my largest class is 28 students, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, I make it, uh, you know, within 24 hours, I respond. Um, I think the thing that frustrates me at times is students don't read the syllabus. Mm-hmm. So they ask you questions and I'll just say, you need to read the syllabus. And they're <laughs> like, well, why don't you just tell me now? Well, in part because I don't memorize my syllabus but right. that's why i write it down that's why you need to go to that but you know for the most part yeah they try hard i've got this class that's entitled slavery to segregation and i have worked them hard really i mean some serious work not a whimper right yeah. and i'd say they of the 22 students 17 18 are good yeah like there's a few kids out there they're like doing graduate level yeah. work and yeah I, it's just you know i I love my job. There's elements of it that are becoming a little bit more difficult. There's more meetings and more yeah. administrative things. Well, you're high up there in the situation. Uh, kind of and kind of not. Just, yeah, I think everyone in your listeners can agree that, you know, every job is obviously not perfect. But as you start to get more experience, you start to do some things that administrative-wise that do matter and are important. But they start to take you away from what you care about yeah. most, right? I mean, yeah. if I had my druthers, I'd just teach and write. Yeah. Mm. And that would be... Who wouldn't? would be it, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, see, yeah. I've learned that I got to be very cognizant of the emails that I answer yeah. because I, I feel like some of the tasks in my ca- career as a nerd that I've <laughs> received have been because I'm the only one that answered my email in a timely manner. Yes, and if I had just waited <laughs> right. 24 hours... Yeah. Somebody else would have taken that on, and I would have been free and clear. Yeah, right. You know, there's a good skill that I've teach. I've taught my children. Like, if you don't like something, yeah, you really don't like it, make Ignore a point it. that no, make a point oh. that you're really awful at it, and then we'll never ask. Ah, you yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yes. That's, That's some a good wisdom, point. Huh? Like cooking. that is good wisdom. Yeah, I bring wisdom. that yeah. up with yeah. cooking all the time. What's the other? Here's another piece of wisdom. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. They say you can't run away from your problems. Yeah. Then you're not doing what. You're not, fast you're not running fast enough. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> hey, uh, Ghost of Sickles, like says, you forgot to mention that jawline on Pete. He shouldn't wear a scarf. The chin looks like it could cut diamonds. That's the lighting <laughs> in the room. <laughs> That's nice. I like to hear that. <laughs> it's because, you know, I'm, I'm like obsessed with uh, CrossFit. Well, you've had implants too. I have little implants, yeah, right? Some, some plastic right. surgery. Chest as well, right? right. That's working out nice glutes. for me. No, I didn't need the glutes. I didn't need that. No, but thank you've you. done enough squats. Thank you for checking that out. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's nice of you. Right. Love it. <laughs> hey, yeah. uh, before we let you go, do you have any questions back there, uh, Cindy or uh, Debbie, for P. Carmichael? Nope. Do, does Cindy Jesus. ever get to come out here and talk? Yeah, she was just, here she was just in the first was segment. Was she out here? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I was on my cell phone reading I stuff. Oh, thanks. Thanks for paying attention. I was, I don't know, I we were really it. funny. Yeah. You missed I it. I missed it all. You missed everything. We were hilarious. So what do you think of this then uh, here? <laughs> Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. Well, you know, it's funny. I heard some of the things. I did hear some of that stuff. Did you, well, did, you hear, I, I, did you hear this? I did hear that. Union was saved by the immortal heroes at Gettysburg. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. Hello, exactly. The Battle of Gettysburg, what an unbelievable, I mean, it was so much and so interesting and so vicious and horrible. Yes. So beautiful in so many different ways. No. It it represented such a big portion of the success of this country. I see now. Gettysburg, wow. I go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania to look and to watch. Come on, man. And uh, the statement of Robert E. Lee, who's no longer in favor. There is no time. Did you ever notice that? No longer in favor. Come on. Oh, my God. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. (laughs) They were fighting uphill. He said, wow. All men and women created by the... Go, you know the you know the thing. There is no time. That was a big mistake. He lost his great general. Bullshit. And uh, they were fighting. Never fight uphill, me boys. But it was too late. That's actually what he said. Election 2024. You did this to yourself, America. Let's move on. Ah, I l- listen. I thought you maybe gave him uh, former President Trump a little too much credit, man. <laughs> he. 
We were tr- no, we're trying. We're well, grasping. Hey, at I don't think that. He, look, he he just he just speaks whatever comes through yeah. his head or what doesn't come through his head. No, he kidding. just talks. He's just not making. It's <laughs> not as if that he had heard something about Gettysburg or, and then he just got things and his facts confused. No, I mean that's, he's got an impoverished view of the past, but that does. This is the beauty of it. Yeah, it doesn't inhibit him right. from just <laughs> free willing it, right? Right. But there's some important things that come out of that, and, and serious things, and that is his reference to Lee. And, you know, we should note that that is an important line of, I would say, of attack. And many folks, your listeners might even agree with it. And that is that we have currently, particularly on the left, people who are determined to violate free speech and also to wipe away or scrape away elements of our past. And it was just a line or two there, but it was important. And he did it uh, uh, tactically, and he had used it before, and he'll use it again. So Mm. as amusing as all of this is, and it is, there still is an important trope there that he has relied upon, I think. And uh, even note, uh, we spent in my class, and I said to them before I showed them the, 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 um, the video, I said, I don't like doing this because there might be somebody, one of my students, who is a supporter of Trump, uh-huh. and this is mocking him, and this is not my classroom, a place to engage in that kind of thing. However, <laughs> there is an audience I want you to pay attention to, and there was a young man that had a Confederate fo- uh, hat on. I said, all right, let's talk. <laughs> the students, is this lost cause? And I wish you all, I wish you could come in and take one I of I my classes, too. man. Yeah. You'd enjoy it. It was smart, thoughtful, and they're like, it's not the lost cause of, you know, the 19th century. It's not even really the lost cause that we've seen in which people harken back to the Confederacy in a very romantic way. It's the lost cause, really, of working class people who say, man, that hat represents that I'm going to stick it to the man, right? It's more of a so, federal government who has abandoned us and that this fight doesn't represent yeah, the act of secession. Uh, yeah. you know, there's nobody in his audience that I can imagine that's contemplating somehow a secession movement. No. I can't imagine it. No, in fact, I was saying to Cindy Dem- when we were down in Harper's Ferry, I was like, okay, you know, the, the, the Union soldiers get a pass, but they were vicious. And uh, what was it? It was, um, oh, Grant's order to Sheridan about the valley and yeah. just, just destroying it so yeah. that a crow would have to carry his own yeah, right. supplies. Um, and I go, you know, we, we don't really, like, all these idiots that are out there saying that they want another civil war, it's one thing to say it feels like one's coming. Right. That's not an endorsement of one. Right. But to right. say you want one, and there are people out there, they're like, let's get this over do you realize that our How government is willing to was. destroy its own people, its own property, and its own people's property in order to bring them back into the fold? Right. Right. Okay, you think they're not going to do that again now because we're nicer right. now? We're not nicer now. And, so and, I'm sorry, but like— Well, I think there's so few people who think that, hey, let's bring this thing on. I think they're true lunatics. I think they're on the fringe. But, of course, as we know, that is the fringe that gets far too much attention. So I don't think any of that— I think what's a graver concern is that how the rhetoric on the extremes, how they portray people in a deranged way. And so what I mean by this, I'll just go to 1860. We have in the South, the Republican Party described as black Republicans, which means they're all abolitionists. We know that was not true. In the North, they call it the slave power. We know that wasn't true as well. Mm -hmm. But that those powerful images, that powerful rhetoric, and I have my students debate and think about this. It's a collapse and breakdown of democracy, ultimately. That's an obvious, I think, point to be made about 1860. But what about today, right? Are we reached a point where we demonize the other? And here is something that I don't think we should overlook, and it's the red and blue nonsense. Yes. That red and blue nonsense. Amen. Thank you, press, because what you've done is you have kept us now from understanding that people are more nuanced. Yes. They are more middle ground, but the blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, and then it becomes self-fulfilling. Then people start to see themselves in that way. And that is my great yeah. fear for as we move forward, as we want to have more conversations in which people say that's a good idea. Well, got to compromise, but it's a good idea. And now we are far removed from that, but we're not close to a civil war except for some lunatics who God knows what they could do. But they're not yeah. organizing a secession no, I, I movement. I mean, it's, right? it's never it, it can't happen. But back to your point about the Confederate hat. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was, I don't know, probably 18, 19 years old, and there was some dust up over the Confederate flag somewhere else. It might have been one of the southern states removing it as their flag. State and, flag, right? Yeah, I, I, I can't remember what it was. And I remember uh, talking to somebody from my parents' generation, so people who are now in their 70s. And he said, you know, I don't understand. He goes, you know, when I was a kid, it was a sign of 
rebellion against yeah. authority. Yeah. It wasn't a sign of racism to us. I go, well, you were in North Jersey. Like, you know, maybe. <laughs> but I'm sure if you lived in Alabama and you saw that thing coming down the road and you were black, you'd be scared out of your mind. Yeah. So, I mean, or it, pissed or pissed or, or, pissed. or, or <laughs> both or whatever. I don't know. But the point is that, like, I, I guess, it, it, you know, it's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. Um, but and I think that's the confusion with it is that there's some people who are like, ban the thing. Yeah. There are other people who are like, I don't get it. It's just yeah, I'm rebelling against authority. Like, what's the big deal? And and that's why everybody's so confused about it. And, and you still see it. And I mean, you see it in northern states. It's been appropriated by other cultures, too. Oh, yeah. It, like There are other like. I'm not saying everybody, but there is a large contingent of people in like a biker community yeah. that use that as, yeah, sure. you know, a symbol uh, of, uh, of a rebellion rebelling against authority. authority. Yeah. It's and, the American sign of rebellion. And so like, and the Gaston I remember flag. growing up thinking like not even associating it with the Confederacy and associating it with bikers. Right. Right. So I, like to me, it was the Dukes head, of Hazzard. It, yeah, yeah. It was like a <laughs> whole. Yeah, with Luke Duke. Yeah. And not that I'm saying that the bikers are bad people, but I'm saying like it, it it means different things to different people, and the nuances that you were mentioning yeah, earlier, hard. like that, is something that but, but that's, we need. That is, it is just hard, right? But it's like this show. Oh, here we come. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. that's why shows like this so allow for that kind of conversation. I'm, I feel for a journalist actually, whether they're doing print journalism or they're doing something on TV, they don't have enough time. Yeah. To like go around and around. Right. We have no lives. So we, we have, have no all the time lives, in the world. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we get sad about this all we want. Uh, it, is, it is fascinating and it is, uh, but I, I am glad that people are, are there are people, not everybody, but there are people willing to talk about it. And, uh, right. you know, when I was speaking to uh, Brian on the phone before the show about the documentary, I, you know, I, I was like, I love learning about all this stuff. Like, I've been in, uh, a history, a historical awareness, uh, like, wh what am I trying to say? Like, I, I've just, th there's been so many things that are just not readily available to us to understand the full story of American history. And the more you get into it, the the more you're like, wow, like, we we weren't perfect, but for some reason I was raised to believe we were. And um, I don't think we're evil. I think we're human. Like any other country on the planet, and and everybody's got their blemishes. Everybody's got the things that they're ashamed of. Like you point out, what about the ones that are still doing it today? Or what about like sex slavery that's going on in the United States today? And I know you're just getting heavy, but like, <coughs> it. But but people have a hard time believing that they're part of the human race and just as shitty as everybody else. <laughs> and, and, and yes, but I would I would also add to that. I mean I. Agree with you. I think that history should leave us unsettled about the past. Yeah, I think we should yeah. recognize that the, the long shadow that it cast. I'm in agreement with you about that. But let's get back to our Chamberlain. You know what? Shame on anyone who can't find in Chamberlain's life something inspiring. Sure. That we can't see within him a real goodness. Yeah. That we can't see his selflessness, and that we can't see it even in people who maybe fought for a cause that we despise. And I think that there is where the left in particular, because they're so focused on their critique of the American past, because they often have a political purpose for it today, that they are alienating and pushing back people who they need to reach, who they need to do exactly what you're talking about. And that is, think about the past in a critical way. Always recognize that there's always more to know. Always recognize that your view should always be changing. But that conversation will never come as long as the academic left is determined to kind of just tear down idols at every moment. Why, Stop why smashing is that? Idols. Well, because we're raised in the academy to be super critical about things in a meaningful way. But it then goes too far, and they let their politics imbue not just their research, but I think their teaching. I don't think it is as bad as the press makes it out to be. Mm -hmm. From my experiences, most of my peers, the classroom is a place that is not partisan. Right. However, I have seen in conversations elsewhere, that, and students get it, they kind of know, of course, what side of the aisle the professor For, is. Sure. So it's grossly exaggerated, especially that's what Fox News will take some you know, lunatic in the, in the academy and hold that person up and say, hey, you're spending $60,000 a year to listen to this. <laughs> right. right. And then they'll right. play it and you're like, oh, my God. But that's not the case, except I will again say in general, 
I mean, I was out for dinner with some academic friends uh, not here in Gettysburg. I just, I was kind of in dismay by the end. I so enjoyed the conversation that I felt like everything that they talked about regarding the past, it somehow would find its way to today, and it was always something critical about this country. And mm. I agree with you, we're hardly perfect, but you know what? There's a lot of really good things this nation has done. I agree. And, and, and if we don't start saying that, yeah. you know, this idea of make America great again, shame on anyone. We've always been a great but imperfect nation, and I want us as people to embrace the goodness of our past, and, and that should be our first step. And that's not to say, hey, victory's been won. It's not. It's an ongoing struggle, right? It'll it'll never end. And and that's right. you know when people Absolutely. use the words of the Declaration of Independence against this country, oh, it it really it bugs makes me no sense. because no. it's like no, like these are ideals. Like first of all, this isn't a legal document. Right. Number one, so get that. But it's these are ideals. These are what and we're living should. up to. What we believe things should be, and we'll never. Absolutely. And rem- and then you look at the Constitution and the phrase. In order to form a more perfect, not a perfect perfect, union, a a more perfect union, because we'll never achieve perfection as long as human beings are around. It should inspire us instead of using it as as a cudgel that we just self-flagellation all the time. Like again, so annoying. Listen, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I'm critical. I'm. don't yeah, give yeah. people easy pass. No, uh, but it, it, at the same time, I, I don't want my students. I mean, I'm whoop, disgusting sharecropping coming out of a, you know emancipation. Jesus is that depressing as hell. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah. But it was a compromise, yeah. and those freed people got that compromise from the former slaveholders. <laughs> it's a small victory, but it is a profound one because guess what? And a necessary you're, one. When you're going to bed at night in your own house. And yes, that cropper, or excuse me, that landlord's got you in debt. You don't have a lot of mobility. It's a, just a rough life, and that's an understatement, but it's not slavery. And again, I'm not trying to say, hey, we should pop a cork for this. I'm just telling you that we have to acknowledge how this change occurs, recognizing just as you said. Yeah. Always look into the future. There are always more challenges. We know that there are people here in our midst here. I mean, man, there are a lot of poor people in Gettysburg. Yeah. There are a lot of homeless here as well, right? Yeah. yeah. That's just the reality of our economic world. But to just look the other way, and I think that's what we're all saying here, man. Yeah. History gives us that sense of responsibility to today. And I think you also need to look at the people in the past and understand, you know, you would hope you give them some grace for <laughs> living in their own lives because yes. I would hope You'd give that 100 grace. years from now you would give me that same grace. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, you well, know, like, absolutely. Well, thank God you'll be dead by then because they probably won't. <laughs> well, I would hope so because I know I've made mistakes. And I know 100 years from now some of the things that I've done in my life people would look back and go, I can't believe she did that. Yeah. I wish uh, people 100 minutes from now would give me that uh, forgiveness, but uh, they probably won't. <laughs> Pete, uh, let's see. Somebody here in the comment section uh, wants to know why you have a uh, on your shirt. <laughs> so this is for uh, I, it's a restaurant in Charleston. Can you read the back of it, Leon? It says Leon's. Fine Leon's. poultry Leon. and oysters. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah. It's a good place if you, like, if you like oysters. Or soup. So it's it's oh. an oyster and what? Shop. It's an oyster bar, man. Poultry and yeah. shop. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Someone take this machine away. I know. I know. I know. Why did we allow this? I'm happen. having too much fun with it. Such a child. But it, <laughs> anyway, this I thought was a very <laughs> interesting conversation. Yeah, I mean, I've missed being on the show. I'm sorry. I've been somewhat. Listen, elusive. you've been very busy. You've got yeah. deadlines to meet. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm never going to get in the way of a man's deadlines. <laughs> So, <laughs> you know, but I mean, it's like, you know, I have to tell you, when you are out of communication, right. uh, I I always felt uh, that uh, oh, I had angered him somehow. I had yes. said something. that There was if, a lot of angst in this room. Yes. Seriously? And yeah. then Cindy, uh, she adopted that, posi- that, that way of feeling without me coaching her on that. Like, she was like, I think Pete hates us because he declined the invitation like the day before you were supposed to come on the show with no explanation. And it was just decl- uh, after accepting it. So it was like accept, no, then I, decline. I, I to somebody. And then that Cindy's like, it. she called me up. She's like crying. And she was like, <laughs> so I'm like, hello. And she's like, <laughs> and I'm like, what's wrong, Cindy? What's wrong? She's like, I think Pete Carmichael hates me. <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean? Why? What happened? <laughs> Did you see? He declined the invitation. Did you Explain why, and he won't answer my email. <laughs> <laughs> no, much of that's not true at all, though. That's I did. Total, I, Cindy, I isn't that I, true? Tell him. No. Thank <laughs> you, Cindy. Thank God. I'm an ally. Thanks for playing along. Uh, 
Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I I saw you all on the street, and what did I do when I saw you both? Ran. Ran to you both. To us. I, I yes. wave at you. That's, you. that's right. Cindy the hug you first, hugged. You got I the hug. You pushed me out of the way. Here's you out the of thing. Way, actually. Everything you just heard actually happened, except that Cindy was the one counseling Matt through his crap. <laughs> 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 it was a kind of a mutual Well, counseling. we have a bromance, and there's been no breakup between us I, I, at, at all. And, and, and you know me well enough. Like well, One, it's pretty hard to offend me. Right. Yeah, I think, it's true. At least I feel like it is. Yeah. And, uh, no, we make fun of your scarves. Make fun of my scarves still wear them. and all. It's. Uh, I will. I was gonna say this is the first time I've ever seen you without one. Well, it's, Honestly, it's, it's kind of warm, it's warm out. Warm yeah. Warm out, and that was the reason why. I'm. I'm. I. I feel yeah. privileged. He wore one here. on the. Were you on the Get Out of the Car tour last yeah, year I with did. Lewis when yeah, when was Pete was on and he yeah. wore. We all wore scarves. Yeah. No, but, because I was on the one where it poured rain. Ah, yes. In fact, I owe, owe Lewis uh, uh, an email. I think he's watching now. Uh, I, I, I owe him. Yeah, I mean, I've, yeah, I love working with Lewis. It's, it's been great. Listen, no, seriously, I have really missed. I so enjoy the show. And unfortunately, things have just gotten kind of busy in a way that I, I wish it weren't that way. Believe actually, me, I right? get it. I get it's, it. Uh, and this is the last semester that I have my girls at home. Oh, and they're going off to college. Off to college, oh. separate schools. Where are they going? Separate schools. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, are they going to be able to handle that? Absolutely. I think. Yeah. They're, they're eager. I mean, <laughs> they'll be, to be done with. I mean, my God, they'll be texting and crying uh, probably each night. Right? But right now, I think it's time for them to go, <laughs> and uh, and I'm eager to you know have some time just me and my wife. It'll be the best. It'll Estella be Beard says, "Oh dear God, bless you, Pete. A bromance with Matt." <laughs> <laughs> and then Beauregard said, Matt got lucky. <laughs> it is a, a, a beautiful bromance. And I, I do, I really do appreciate all the support you've given me over the years. From the very first time he was on the show, he was like, I love what you do. I think you're great. Listen, I'm going to get you on uh, the book reviewers list at UNC Press. Oh, I and, and I still get books from them. Yeah. And that's how we get all of the authors we have yeah. on the show. And I've met some right. amazing people because of you. You've been very supportive. You invited us to CWI all these years, yeah. and we love doing it. Yeah. I, I really, I'm telling you, and Ashley said I need my head checked, but I look forward to it more than Christmas. I look for, <laughs> it's, I'm so excited for it. It's so much fun. It's yeah. just so it much fun. fun. It's, it's just, it's funny. Ashley and I were talking logistics, and I won't, at least I can't tell you all, but we were going back and forth. I finally said, Ashley, I said, oh my God, if the attendees only knew yeah. the things that we are saying to each other. Because these things, you can't imagine. Well, you guys know things that misfire. I mean, everyone knows that in their own jobs, behind the scenes. Sure. These things arise, and you're like, Jesus, how did this happen? Yeah. <laughs> right? And it comes up all the time. And, you know, uh, thankfully, Ashley's hilarious. We have a great time together. Jill's really funny. Yeah, you do have a great staff. I'm very lucky. Yeah, Because I, I can't keep control. I can't remember all those details. Mm-hmm. I just can't do it. I can't either. Yeah, that's, I can't. That's why I have these ladies uh, around. Yeah, they remember crazy. shit. I don't. But I, that's, you know, the good thing, Matt. We know, remember we everything. Remember. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes, you do. But that's what's fun about CWIs because, like you said, man, the attendees and the faculty, they, you know, they get to mingle. They get to talk. I I really believe that even amongst the attendees who have been going a number of years, they're welcoming, they're, right, they're nice. I, that's what I want. I, I cannot stand an academic conference in which you're talking to someone and they're looking at your name tag to see if you're important. You won't have that Yeah, that's happen. not the way it no. is here. It's just no. not the way it is. And, and I will put up our conference with any academic civil war conference in terms of the range of programming that yeah, we offer. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. I've, I've never gone to other ones because I'm not invited, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I have a hard time believing You're that. You're really selling this on. <laughs> no, 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 no. What, what I'm saying is that, where's my, where did I put this? Oh, here. Is this yours or mine? What is this? Can you help me here? I'm, what? What, what have got there? No, that's yours. Okay. Anyway, I'm trying to find the, the thing here. Don't but anyway, touch it. The, uh, give me the phone number again, Pete. I don't know. 717. Uh, I don't know where my paper was. Uh, listen, we've been telling you what's the easy way. We're like, what world are you living in? All right, in? Google it, Google ladies it, and gentlemen. Man. Google it. Gettysburg and then College. You got to say Gettysburg College and CWI. Gettysburg and College, it, CWI. Or, or if they can't find Summer it, conference. Peter Carmichael, Gettysburg College. You can get my email. Send me an email. Here it is. Here it is. And I'll, yeah, send me what's, an email. Yeah, what's your, okay, send me an email. How about that? What's that? The, what, send me an email. What does that mean? Oh. What, what's your email? Hey, I just said you could Google that too, <laughs> but I'll even give it to you. The letter P, as in Pete, C A R M I C H, at gettysburg.edu. 
or Civil War at Gettysburg.edu or seven one seven three three seven six five nine zero. Hey, just we also have just weekend only. We've got a lot of great tours. My point is that if you feel like, oh, I don't have a lot of time to commit to this, you can do the whole basically five days. Great you point. Do weekend. You don't have to do the whole you thing. You don't have to do yeah. the whole. You could do a la carte if you want. A- absolutely. You could just go for a day. You could just do for a day as well. And uh, yeah, so man, we'd love to see you know some new folks there. There's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, and I love. Hey, and the foundation's coming. Yeah, we. Um, oh my gosh, who's your uh, temporary director right now? David, David Malgi. David Malgi. Yeah, he's a good dude. So Great David dude. is doing a session, bringing in Stuff the relics collection. from Little Round Top. No, from oh. his Gettysburg collection. So we have an entire session. It's Monday night. We're going to have a, a bar, um, a cash bar, and you. Where get, is this? It's Monday night of the conference. Right. So Monday night of the conference. David Mauge, he is a great guy. He, he is, is a wonderful He's man. a really good I historian. Asked him if, I like if him I a lot. I could be his date to go to Absolutely. that because then that way I would have a reason to go. Like, yeah. Mark wouldn't question me going. Yeah. What do you mean? You're working. You're coming. No, no, no. You definitely should come in. Anyone from the foundation should come. You oh, tell, definitely. I yeah. tell any of those people, the Park Service people, they. We want this to be a place for the historians in this community. Yeah, I mean... Mauge's fantastic. By the way... He's wonderful. By the way, be sure to inquire about our numerous discounts for military veterans, Gettysburg Gettysburg College students, I'm sorry, alumni, members of local partnering institutions and publications, K-12 educators, public historians, students, youths, and, quote, new attendee recruiters. What's that, new attendee recruiters? Thank you. you. If you bring a new person, you get 50% off. But the thing Look I forgot, that. and Look you just that. mentioned it, if you are an Adams County teacher, you can come for free. Adams County teachers come for free. So, And with public historians come for free yeah. as well. Battlefield guides can come for free. That was I it. like that you have you have Battlefield guides involved with this. Absolutely. Jim Hessler, our own Lewis Jim. Trott. They speak, but they can also, those can, they can come. Like it's That's a... Really important to me, yeah. right? Well, yeah. It's important that we all can come together and, and have an opportunity to chat. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry, Beth. It's okay. Ice cream social. It's good. On Friday night. <laughs> Usually that was like, you would do that later. Is that always on Friday? No, it's not always on Friday. It always is on Friday. But now the cash bar is new for Malgi, which yes. I think will be fun. It I think will be. be. Have you heard him tell some of the stories about oh, his yeah. brother? Mm-hmm. It's quite mm-hmm. good. Yeah, it's so very we'll good. Sit I've gone into his basement and yeah. seen them and it's heard the stories. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yes. He spoke to my students. He spoke to my students. He was fantastic. Yeah. He's very passionate. And what? what makes it so great is that like he'll come to a meeting yeah. as our interim president. Right. And he'll come to a meeting and he'll just start talking about something. And we're like, who is recording? Right. Somebody press record. Right. Right. Absolutely. He just is so passionate about yeah. what yeah. he's yeah. doing. He's and good. he loves this place. He's so gonna much. so the other thing, I'm glad can I do one more promo? Yeah, please it's do. An important one, ready? Yeah. So a life dream is being realized for me. Oh my! In I'm July, flattered. are you ready? Oh, I thought you meant yeah, being here. I'm not being here. I'm sorry. Sorry. It's already been realized. This will be realized in July. I am heading a Civil War camp for high school students. Oh, really? Now, what's that going to be like? What is that? It's what do you be do? Pretty good, right? So it's going to be a lot of field experience. I think that the capstone of the event is I'm taking them to. Washington D.C. to do research at the National Archives. Oh, they nice! They are each assigned a soldier. I'm terrible with my numbers. The New Hampshire regiment that has the brilliant monument of granite rocks at the wilderness at the wilderness at the wheat field. Um, your one of your listeners will write something right now. They'll know something. And the main uh, regiment in the wheat field that's behind the stone wall is that the 16th Maine. At any rate, each high school student gets assigned. A soldier will go down to the archives. They'll look at their pension records, their compiled service records. They then have a folder on that regiment. They will come back to the battlefield. They'll reconstruct the oh, movements wow. of that. Yeah, that's going to be great. That's We're awesome. going to the Seminary Ridge Museum. They're going to do an escape great room. Great museum. There. Great museum. They're going to do the escape room. We have a, we're going to go to the Spangler Farm for the foundation. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Maugi. Got me connected there. We're using park service people, including Chris Gwynn, Barb Sanders, John Optak. And so it's going to be a lot of immersive experiences. 17th and I, Maine. 17th Maine, thank you. I'm, you know, I always get that wrong. Uh, what's the New Hampshire Regiment? 5th. 5th. Yeah, sorry, Colonel Cross is old. Yeah. Regiment, right? So that's what they're going to do. Listen, we have, email me. We have lots of spots available. You, I think about 10. And Do I, you have a rack card or something that I can put at the Children's Museum? Email Talk me, to Ashley. Email me and okay. we'll get it. We'll, we'll get it. So I've never done anything like this before. 
And we all, of course, lament, which is not true, but we lament, lament that young people don't care about the past. Uh, I've got some interesting kids, some coming even from California uh, for this. So that's going to be in July. I should know that. Know the dates off the top of my head. I do not. I think it's the third week in July. Either way. Send me an email. I'll get you okay. the information. All right. A lot of people are like, God, you know, I'm not in high school anymore, but. I'd love to do this. Yeah. But that's kind of what I think is so cool about CWI, uh, the, 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 the conference, is that it kind of feels like going to camp. Mm-hmm. It's not it exactly going to camp, but it mm-hmm. kind of does. Because, you know, like if you're if you're visiting from far away, you're staying in a dorm or something, or maybe you got a hotel, I don't know. But like, and, and you're eating in a cafeteria and you're seeing the same people the whole time. It's just a lot of fun, and I and I can't I can't stress it enough that I want to see a lot of our listeners there. Yes, absolutely. Uh, because it uh, you'll love it, you'll love it, and bi- then it'll be something we could all get, talk about on our get out of the car tour. Fifteen percent off, and let's just note that next year, two thousand twenty-five. This is the our big... own Matt Callery is going to be there. That's main right. stage. Main stage. Wait, Wait what? Right. That's yeah. right. I'm Do playing drums. This. I'm playing drums, and then I'm going over to the piano, and then I'm singing. Uh, Bebopalula, she's my baby. The while doing the it thing. the whole time, it's gonna be great. No, so we're gonna do gonna a be, panel. Seriously, he's not gonna be behind the uh, the camera. He's gonna be one of the panelists. And we we, we have, have to some, figure out what we it do. Is. Well, I have some I, ideas. Ashley and I have come up with something. The again, we're not doing themes. Okay. But for next year, I don't want to confuse anyone. Next year, twenty twenty five. Thank you. Say that. Two thousand twenty five. Yeah. Yes. We will be featuring the scholarship of Gary Gallagher. We'll have three panels reflecting on questions, inquiries that have shaped his work. Then he will be giving a talk, we hope, at the Spangler Farm, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We're going to go out with the folks uh, from the foundation in a few weeks. Yes. And he's going to give a talk there that will reflect upon his journey as a historian. Mm-hmm. So we're going to have a lot of kind of big guns, as they say, in the field. And it's going to be not a, a sending off, although Dr. Gallagher is moving to California for good, yeah. so he won't be close. He's like moving he to work. California? To yeah. California. Usually be everybody's near to moving family. away. You oh, okay. Think, right. Okay, gotcha. his, well, yes, his, his partner is out there, right? Yeah. So my point is, is I uh, think about that. And he agreed today. I called him this morning. I said, how about doing two half-day tours that are Gary Gallagher's favorite sites on the Gettysburg Battlefield. That'd be That's fun. cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there we go. Nice. So, yes, we've what does that have to do with me? The <laughs> You're going to give it the talk, man. Which it, talk? You want it to be all about you. It's going to be <laughs> about the panel. I, we have to kind of settle on that. We have some other names I out have, there. I have some ideas. I, have, I, I, I know people. I think we could put together something really good where we could all work together well, but also it would be, I think, uh, everyone would win. So let's... Meaning you, mm-hmm. <laughs> right, Ashley? Uh, well, we'll get to after. Why don't we do this after you get this one done? We well, know we're like we are like oh, you doing need to it do right it. now. Oh yeah, yeah. we're already renting yeah. tents and stuff. Wow. Yeah, man, wow, we think amazing. way ahead. Amazing. We've got Gallagher in there. We I just sent a preliminary to all the people who are going to be reflecting on Gallagher's. Work. Well, then why don't I come by the office next week sometime and we'll talk about something. Just send a little note. I will and send we'll, a note. We'll uh, we'll do just. Something. All right, that sounds good. Pete hey, Carmichael, thank you so much for having. Thank me you on, very man. much no. for coming on. It's great to see you again. I missed you, and uh, I'm glad too. you're back. And uh, we're looking forward to this. June yeah. 7th, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. a date which will live in FAMI. <laughs> not, <laughs> not infamy, but FAMI. <laughs> Such an idiot. Oh, oh, we'll be right, right back. Right. Back to these words. Someone most likely has to pee, so we'll be right back. Forget the sounds of the 60s. The 1860s. I can't, and you can't either. Now, there's Marching Through Georgia, the exciting new album by Billy Webster. All of your favorite hits of the 1860s in one place. Such hits as Gary Owens. The Battle Hymn of the Republic. Quiet along the Potomac tonight. tonight. 
marching through Georgia. Why we were marching through Georgia. And much, much more. So what are you waiting for? Go to billysongs.com and order your digital download of Billy Webster's Marching Through Georgia today. That's billysongs.com. Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center, Gettysburg's premier museum, is housed in the historic Lutheran Seminary building constructed in 1832, a witness to the first day of battle. The museum's three floors of exhibits connect visitors to the dilemmas that led to the Civil War, provide a powerful and personal view of the battle's first day, and explore one of the battlefield's largest hospitals. No visit to Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center is complete without a guided tour of the building's famous cupola, where on the eve of battle, officers and civilians saw thousands of Confederate soldiers' campfires burning to the west, and Brigadier General John Buford watched for vital federal reinforcements as fighting erupted on the morning of July 1st. Today, you can stand where Buford stood and discover how this view helped chart the course of the Battle of Gettysburg. Your trip to Gettysburg is not complete without a serious visit to Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center, Gettysburg's premier museum. Purchase tickets online at seminaryridgemuseum.org or call 717-339-1300. To get tickets or a cupola tour, listeners may call Call or walk in and mention address in Gettysburg or by ordering online using the promo code AG1863 for 20% off. Seminary Ridge Museum and Education Center. It began here. There's a devil to pay. If you're a lover of history, then go to trhistorical.com. There you'll find apparel, drinkware, decor, and more featuring a wide range of interests from the ancient world to the Cold War. Looking to make an impression with the perfect gift? Well, TR Historical now offers gift cards and a vintage wrapping service for a truly unique presentation. And our listeners will receive 10% off plus free shipping in the U.S. when you use promo code GBERG1863. So go to trhistorical.com, trhistorical, for the love of history. Think outside the bus and let family-owned Gettys Bike Tours take you on a cycling journey across the picturesque and historic Gettysburg battlefield. There's no better way than by bicycle to gain a feel for the terrain of the battlefield. Slow enough to see it all, yet fast enough to do it all. Follow the route of Union troops entering the fray as you ride to the site of the first shots of this epic three-day battle. Feel the drama as you put yourself in the position of a Confederate soldier just before he steps off to make Pickett's charge. Take a stand with the heroic Colonel Chan Chamberlain on the slopes of Little Round Top, just before you view the Fields of Honor beneath you from its summit. All of our guides are officially licensed by the National Park Service. So don't get a sore neck trying to see out of your car and saddle up with Getty's Bike Tours for a 360-degree view of America's most important piece of real estate. Getty's Bike Tours. Think outside the bus. Go to Getty'sBike.com or call 717-752-7752 to book a battlefield experience you will never forget. You've heard us promote various ways that you can help us keep the show going, but one way we haven't pushed too much is our sutlery at AddressingGettysburg.com slash shop. That's a shame because we have designs over there by talented artists like Ty DeWitt of 1863 Designs and Mike Stretch of the Heritage Depot. So now we're promoting it. Buying shirts, hoodies, mugs, and other items from our sutlery not only helps us keep the lights on, but it also helps guys like Ty and Mike, and it helps spread the word about the show every time you wear an item or you sip from your mug. So head over to AddressingGettysburg.com slash shop and grab some merch. It's the perfect Christmas gift for the Gettys nerd in your family. That's AddressingGettysburg.com slash shop. Our favorite bookstore in Gettysburg is For the Historian, located at 42 York Street. It's because they have the best selection of Civil War books in Gettysburg, both new and used. And online, they have even more to choose from. And if the Civil War isn't your thing, that's not a problem. This is For the Historian, after all. They cover history from the ancient world to the 21st century with a strong selection of World War II and American Revolution books. It's astounding how many thousands of titles from Osprey, Savas Beattie, UNC Press, and more they have in their store. And that's because, well, they have a warehouse too. And that's where they keep all the books that are available online at ForTheHistorian.com. And folks, if you go to ForTheHistorian.com now and order books until you're blue in the face, be sure you mention that you heard about them on Address in Gettysburg in the note to seller box. And they will refund your shipping costs. And if you prefer to stop by when you're in town, well, you could do that too. 
Just mention address in Gettysburg at checkout, and they'll take 20% off the retail price of your item. So go to ForTheHistorian.com, stop by 42 York Street, or you can call them at 717-685-5207. That's ForTheHistorian.com or 717-685-5207. You're listening to Addressing Gettysburg. It's, uh, you know what it is, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get out of the car tour season has begun. And uh, Saturday is our first one. Of course, it is the Vermont Brigade on Cemetery Ridge. Vermont! Sorry. As uh, Pickett's Division marched into history on July 3rd, 1863, securing their right flank would be crucial to success. The men from Vermont would play a crucial role, horror firm. And helping to ensure that they failed in that. Okay, Beth? Yep. So join us as we highlight the role of these nine-month men during their most important action. Meet at the Vermont Monument on Hancock Avenue. It ends at the 13th Vermont Advanced Marker Park. Where legal, park, where legal, park, where legal. Park in the cemetery parking lot. That's what I would do. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's the easiest thing. Let me tell you. So we're doing, usually we do stickers, um, but this year, instead of stickers, uh, we, I just sunk a lot of coin in on, magnets. no, oh. notebooks, okay, notebooks. Oh, so people can take notes while they're on the tour, oh my god. Yeah. You're so yeah. smart. Thank you, Jamie, for clapping. Uh, you know, nobody ever claps, you're supposed to clap along. I, uh, you do. Was I literally yeah, you clapping did it, you just You did now. it there, but just first time ever. All right. Anyway, so, <laughs> you are so full of poo. Anyway, um. the um, the notebooks they they have our logo on them. They even come with a pen, and they fit in your pocket. That's wonderful. So now you can come on every tour and take notes, notes. and then you know fill it up, and then uh, maybe we'll get them again next year. I don't know. Maybe we'll find something else. Or get your Matt Calorie autograph. You can get an autograph. There you go. You get an autograph. Jamie's not clapping for that one. No, he's like, I don't want your autograph, dude. I'm starstruck. And I'm <laughs> right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, uh, the, now the, 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 I don't know if it's going to be May, but it might be June. Uh, we're going to do uh, something else. I'm thinking a metal keychain that's like embossed, like where it's ra- the logo is raised up or something. But it's okay. going to be uh, we have Mike Stretch working on a logo for the entire season, the 2024 season. So we'll do something like that. Okay. I wanted to do a challenge coin, but those are damn expensive, and I don't charge wow. for these stores. So. You know, I don't mind yeah. the write-off, but uh, you got to eat too. So uh, that's that's what we're doing there. We're going to uh, give you some keepsakes that'll actually be uh, one useful, and the other one will weigh down your keys in your pocket even more, or something like that. So don't forget, join us. Tour starts at ten. Get there nine nine thirty somewhere in there. It's going to be fun. And for those of you who want to watch at home, they will be videotaped. They're not going to be released anytime soon. But they will be videotaped so that you can watch them. We've had people requesting that for years, Jamie. And um, sorry, what? I said, I'm aware. Yes. And uh, (laughs) now I finally have the means to do it. And our friend Ken Mead is going to uh, man the camera. And so, uh, yeah, so we'll have those out there for you and everything. We want you guys to uh, experience your battlefield whichever way you can. So that's it. April 20th, 10 o'clock in the morning. See you there. Park where legal, park where legal, or be square, etc. Bye bye. I'm Wendell Clarkson, Vice President of Marketing at MT Bank in Hooperstown, Louisiana. I want my customers to feel that they have a friend here at MT Bank. And so when they come in for a loan, I make sure that they feel comfortable. I offer them coffee, donuts, and I let them sit down on a couch that I have in my office. Because in reality, the answer is probably going to be no. I can't give them that loan. It's a pretty depressed area around here. But at least we tell you no with a smile. M&T Bank. Your neighborhood neighborhood house of disappointment.
If Tweedledee and Tweedledum had children, they'd be like these two. Here's Matt. I uh, never heard that one before. Yeah. It was originally written for me for and Veronica. Veronica. Okay, good. <laughs> but uh, I finally dusted it off now. So well, now, before we get into news or anything, we got a caller here. He says his name is Wayne, so we want to uh, talk to him. Wayne, you're on the air. Wayne, how's that up? loaf? Yes, come on. How's the loaf there, Wayne? <laughs> Pretty damn good at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> good. How you doing, Wayne? Deep. Stood as erect as I am now. Oh yeah. Oh, I, I'd, I'd have oh yeah. Thing. <laughs> What's going on? How you doing, Grant? Stop. You gonna open the? You gonna open the door or what? Are you here? Oh please, he's not here. Yes. No, you're not. Ring the bell. Yeah. I'm gonna turn the mic on in the back Where's room. The bell, back door, front door. No, you go to the back. You go to the back on the alleyway. He's not here, guys. Come on. Yeah, in September. In I was September, gonna say, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, I thought it was the fall. See you I was, in September. I thought it was the fall. I was going to say October, but I was so excited there yeah, for a second. Yeah, I was excited too, actually. I wanted to meet with That would have been a great... I mean, I, I'd be excited to... Yeah, I'd be excited to see me too, so... <laughs> <laughs> So, Wayne, I'm um, sorry, Wayne, why do I do that? Loaf, <laughs> Loaf, uh, what did you think of uh, the uh, the words about uh, the great battle of Gettysburg? In case you missed it, here they are one more time. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. Gettysburg, wow. He said, wow. wow. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill. Never fight uphill, me boys. But it was too late. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, what do you think of that? I think I think it's great that... I think it's great that one of America's great historians is running for president. That's right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I do want to say one COVID thing. COVID has taken this year, just since the outbreak, has taken more than 100 years. Look, here's the <laughs> wow. lives. It's just, it's just, when you think about it. Gettysburg, wow. <laughs> I mean, at least he mentions us. At least right. we're topical. <laughs> America's dead. Uh, so anyway, you go, you go, go ahead. You were saying, uh, yeah, no, no, it's very good. Uh, speaking of, I mean, this is a history podcast after all, I'm going to test the host cause he's such a great historian himself. Right. Sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. We've had arguments okay, about this so, with P Carmichael. Go ahead. What is it? I have a, a simple question. I can't hear you, Grant. What's that? Grant? <laughs> Grant hello. Grant. No, go ahead. What do you, what do you want? Was that Crossroads? <laughs> <laughs> that was a Money and Cigarettes classic. Zero. Oh, God, I love that song. Zero. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it's up. It's right up there with Millie Vanilli. That uh, one of my favorites. Uh, can't read that. Can't read that. No, he can't read that. <laughs> Poker face. She's got me like nobody. All right, come on, Grant. Hurry up. We got to get dinner. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm trying to drag it out. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Well, please. <laughs> no, July 1st. July 1st. That's the first day of the battle for you, Matt. Um, now, <laughs> <laughs> what, what? What? there were seven Union commanders. Can you name them in order of who, were, who took over the for Union forces in order? On July 1st? July 1st. Are we starting with command of the field west of town and working our way through? So in other words, yep. John Buford? That cowboy Sam Elliott guy. Right, so yeah. we got Sam That's Elliott, one. then we got John Reynolds, then we have Abner Doubleday, and then we have mm -hmm. uh, Oliver Otis Howard, and then we have yes. Winfield Scott Hancock. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Yes. Yeah, That's Winfield right. Scott Hancock, right. And... Two more. You said seven. Oh, yeah, that's okay. I'm on five. Thank you. And then uh, after him was Slocum, I think he thought he was in charge. Oh, no, was it? Yes, Slocum. Yeah, Otis. Slocum. And then uh, uh, your old uh, General Meade there. There you go. See, that's now you are a historian, you know? Oh, Aww, that's not a historian. How adorable. That's what Peter was, was, was demonstrating before thought analysis. That's what a historian does, rattling off facts. But thank you, Grant. Thank you for trying to make me feel better. 
<laughs> That's all right. I mean, six questions would have done that twice as far. He would have, okay. yeah, absolutely. He would have sneezed and it would have all come out at the same time. Uh, and Matt, hey, guess what, Matt? Did you know that? Yes. Did you know my friends and family back at home here in Australia, they they can't believe that I get to talk to the guy, the host of the Gettysburg podcast. Ooh. They can't believe it. Jim Hassler. And they say, and then then they say, oh, you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to get <laughs> the other night we were watching the um, the the last lecture that we did. Right. And uh, J- Grant, what did you say? It was so funny how you did. It. And I knew where you were going before I even saw Jim Hessler. But what did you say it? Yeah, you, you ha- you're smart occasionally. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, such a hard working guy. Um, no, I just said, you know, uh, what do you call a guy that. Uh, does a podcast that inspires so many to learn about the battle? What do you call about a guy? What do you call a guy who is so charming and funny and personable on his podcast? And then kind of, and then I said Jim Hessler. And I mean, that's true. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> oh, Tim Smith doesn't agree guy. with you there. What a great guy. <laughs> Well, listen. You can stay over now, but I'm going over now. All right, listen. We got to go, Grant. It's great to talk to you, and I, I, I can't wait until you come on out and uh, see us here. It's going to be a lot of fun to have you around. Well, it's definitely it, it's it's de- definitely September. There's uh, so I've, I've have you set the date? I haven't booked it, but I've got I've, you I've booked set it. the date, but that's a, that's going to be part of the surprise. But because um, hmm. it's going to be quiet apparently there, from what I'm looked into. So okay, well, good. The good. So that's more attention we can pay to you, Granny, okay? And, and clock's ticking, Matt. You're only getting older, so you're going to be older than me still. <laughs> I might be dead by then, so you better hurry up and get here. <laughs> Grant, it was great to talk to you. Thank you okay, for the call. Thank you enough. for your continued support and bullshit, and I'll talk to you next time, Granny. Hey, yes, what? oh, wait, I'm sorry, sorry. I hung up on you. And oh! Now, all the news that's fit to print and a good deal that's not. Wait, are you Here's doing the AG funny one? lead anchor Bethany Yingling with current events and sidewalk conditions. I, do. I haven't even read it. Let's go. I haven't even read that's it. That's the fun of it. Try to get ready. Do it one more time. And now, all the news that's fit to print and a good deal that's not. Here's AG Today's lead anchor Bethany Yingling with current events and sidewalk conditions. Eisenhower National Historic Site will be celebrating World War I weekend this year. Sweet Tooth is opening at, s- s- what's it called now? Dun, dun. Yep, exactly. And that's all the ones I've read so far. Yeah, so I don't right. know where I am. Dun, dun. More people are dying <laughs> in horrible ways in Gettysburg, <laughs> Pennsylvania. Oh, oh this dun, cough dun. is killing me. This cough is literally, I'm dying. All right, so go ahead. You're dying in horrible ways. Uh, listen, okay. but before you actually get on with that, I want to tell you oh, something, geez. okay? It's very important. Okay. Route 15. You're Wait, gonna okay. No. Go ahead, uh, and then but this is important for Saturday, so make sure you get that in there for the people. If you're coming on Saturday, make sure you listen to this. Uh, also, this Monday on Patreon, colorizing photos with Dr. James Beagley. Um, it is uh, it is a really good one because he talks about how you colorize old photos. And so the for those of you like Photoshop geeks or something, this is for you. It's on Patreon. It'll be available. Uh, from the, uh, what, I think, uh, Sergeant Major on up, if I'm not mistaken. Also, I have a question for you, patrons, uh, actually for all of you listeners, because this would be a free episode. We have a Masters of the Air buried in Gettysburg National Cemetery episode. Ralph Siegel and Lewis Trott uh, did a, a wonderful work, and they gave me pictures, and I loaded them into the camera or into the uh, software, and uh, guess what happens in the middle of the show? Eric Houston oh, uh, broke no. the computer and it restarted itself and we lost the video. So those visuals are moot. And so if I put the audio out, you're only going to hear him saying, and if you look at the picture here, this is a picture of him. And then you're not going to be able to see it. it's going to be frustrating. Should I put it out? Or should I just say that'll be something that they'll release after I'm dead and we'll say this was the missing episode? So that's the answer I want to know. Answer it in the comments section while Bethany is telling you about the news. Go ahead, Beth. Okay. Oh, and by the way, Jamie Umstead is here, and she's got sidewalk conditions for you. Welcome, Jamie. It's great to see you. I'm glad you're here. Oh, <laughs> Hello, Jamie. Jamie. Yo, Jamie. Well, no. you, you did invoke the name of the Spangler Farm people, so well, at least... Carmichael did. So, yeah, so yes. henceforth, I had to appear. And oh, plus, oh. you never answer the phone when I call anymore, so... Well, I don't have the phone on. <laughs> <laughs> I had it on today. It was rare because I... 
We've been using the been, hot spot yeah. to be able to. It's a real pain in the nuts. So right, anyway. Go ahead, yeah. Bethany. So <gasps> since you brought it up, um, this is a reminder that the northbound and southbound ra- uh, lanes of Route 15 in Adams County, aka here in Gettysburg, are scheduled to be closed this weekend. So if you're coming to Gettysburg for the Get Out of the Car Tour or for Spring Muster or for any things that are happening this weekend, just know that starting at 9 p.m. on Friday, April 19th, through 6 a.m. on Monday, April 22nd, there will be portions of Route 15. All lanes will be closed. You will have to detour off of that road onto a, a pre-described detour to get back onto 15 to continue on your way. Now, now the uh, the root where, of this detour where, is interesting. It is interesting. Yes. Um, however, let me tell you where the road work is going to be. Go ahead. So the northbound traffic coming in from Maryland will exit at Welty Road in Maryland, just south of the PA line, and then proceed north on Old Gettysburg Road, a.k.a. Emmitsburg, the old Route 15, um, to north of the closure. Southbound traffic coming like down from uh, York Street, Hanover Street, Baltimore Street, Tawny Town Road will all be open as far as I can tell. Right. They have one lane. It's down to one lane on those roads. Um, so just be prepared for some uh, exciting adventure in sitting. Yeah. Take some old routes if you can. If you're Go coming the back from way. the south. Um, so if you're coming down from the north, it shouldn't be a problem because you can get off on 30. You can, but again... But they're detouring. Yeah. yeah. Some of these roads are going to probably be a lot more heavily used than they normally are off of 15 because mm-hmm. people are going to be like, oh, crap, I got to get right. off this road. You and could also, roads, so. to avoid those, the congestion on those roads, you could take, uh, what is that, 234? What is that exit up there? Heidelberg exit. East Berlin. Yeah. Uh, East Berlin. And then uh, there's another one up above 30, right? There's, yeah, the uh, 394. 394. You could take Hunterstown that. Hunterstown Road. Hunterstown Road. So there are other ones you could take that are not necessarily marked as Gettysburg exits, but they, they will take you to Gettysburg. Yeah. Just remember when you get off them to turn left as soon as you can, <laughs> and you'll eventually get to Gettysburg. All roads that, lead to Gettysburg. That's they do. not true. That is true. When you get off the exit <clears throat> coming southbound, well, you want to turn right. <laughs> okay, f- fair enough. You get the on sped right and then turn the left. specific the road left until you fake. get to like f- fifteen or thirty-four, whichever yeah. one you choose to so, do to right. come down. And if get you if you get off at two thirty-four where Rudders is, you want to turn towards the Rudders, regardless. Well, you're yeah. coming down from the north, right? Mm-hmm. So you want to turn right. Okay, yeah, you got it. Okay, great. Okay, great. Go ahead. What else? <laughs> Beware you the college students. He doesn't listen to me. Like I'm just speaking. hungry. Okay. <laughs> um, so if you're going southbound, you should exit at the Steinware Avenue exit and then proceed south on Emmitsburg Road um, to below the fifth, below the state line. So there will be flaggers on hand at Welty Road to assist traffic movement at the southern end of the tour re- the reroute. That's too funny. The detour route is what I think they meant to say. Mm. This work is part of a 14.8 mile pavement preservation project that includes diamond grinding, milling, and overlaying Ooh. ramps and shoulders. Diamond grind? I didn't know we had diamonds around yes. here. Yes. Wow. Guide Late rail replacement, <laughs> pipe replacement, and other miscellaneous activities. Mm. Miscellaneous. Activities. I know. Uh, it is an eight, if you care, it's an eight million three hundred and eighteen thousand dollar project i was going to ask you that yeah expected to be completed by february 19th 2025 so that leads us to believe that the entire summer there is going to be some kind of road work between york street and steinwire avenue on route 15 yeah. going in both directions right so maybe they're putting in that. sidewalks Maybe, and then you could report on the sidewalks on Route 15. No, no, I'll, I'll bet you. 15. <laughs> I'll bet you it's probably some kind of pipe stuff related to yeah. uh, Amblebrook. Because oh. suddenly they realize it's south. Oh, it's way south. We don't have. Yeah, yeah but the, the pipe's got to go somewhere. But it's going this way, not this way. Oh, I thought it's going along Route 15. No, it's going across. Oh, that's that's wonderful. why all the lanes are that's closed. That's wonderful. Okay. Yeah, and it's south of Steinmore Avenue, so it's. Way too I just want to blame Amblebrook for okay. all the problems. All right, all right. All Sorry. Right. All right. All right. Go ahead. All right. So, again, if you are coming to Gettysburg this weekend, a.k.a. the 19th through the 22nd of April, 
be aware that there are going to be sections of Route 15, both northbound and southbound, that are going to be completely closed. Mm -hmm. Completely. Mm -hmm. You will have to completely go off mm -hmm. of Route 15 mm -hmm. to get where you are going. Mm -hmm. How's that loaf? Exactly. How's that loaf? Okay. <laughs> Guys are ridiculous. <laughs> <coughs> More people are dying in horrible ways in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> okay, go ahead. What else we got? You know, it's interesting. Uh, the the because uh, we came up today from Harpers Ferry and it is, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. already started. You know, so mm -hmm. we had to get down to one lane and we ended up getting off of uh, the road because it was it was like forget this I'll go through town so we went yeah. through town mm -hmm. because it was we could see up ahead and it was just here's the chance for nachtmare. people who don't normally go off of the main drag to see the way Gettysburg would have been before Route 15 existed yeah hmm. there you go yeah yeah if you if you take the Gettysburg when Cindy was reading the the detour route in the car to me and she's like you know, well, you got to get on the Gettysburg Road. <laughs> and I was like, what? Mm -hmm. the Gettysburg Road. And then I realized, oh, it's starting you way down You're south way where down. Mm -hmm. the Emmitsburg Road is the Gettysburg Road to people from Emmitsburg. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. It's like the yeah. Fairfield Road takes you to Fairfield. Yeah. The Hanover Road takes you to Hanover. Exactly. And Until, unless Pike. you're Schnauzer. coming from them. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> the 11th annual Empty Bowls fundraiser is coming up. Plank now, what Gym. is the Empty Bowls fundraiser? Well, I'm going to read it to you okay. here in a second. Plank Gym on the Gettysburg College campus will be the site of the Empty Bowls fundraiser for n Friday, April 26th from 4 to 7 p.m. It's hosted by The Gleaning Project, and it brings together artists, business, restaurants, and philanthropists to make a meaningful impact in the fight against food insecurity and the need for nutritious produce to be available to community members in need. Sounds delicious. Yeah, so they uh, local people, you can donate your art and then it can be sold. The proceeds go back to this project. Mm. So the whole, I'm waiting for you to do a compilation of me just going. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't already been done. Yeah, it's, I'm working on he's it. He's got to have that ready. <laughs> oh my God, my gut hurts. Okay. <laughs> okay, what else? How many months has it been? The funds, <laughs> <laughs> the funds raised at the Empty Bowls fundraiser will enable the Gleaning Project to expand its efforts in um, rescuing surplus produce and distributing it to local food banks, shelters, and community organizations. So uh, wait, I, it's, I, it sponsors I, the, I, the local food bank. A few <laughs> pre-sale tickets are $20 each. Tickets at the door are $25. What is? Oh. Why do they use the word rescue? Who's holding it hostage? I think it's because people, you know how like when you buy produce and you take it home and then you never do anything with it and it sits in your fridge and it rots and you and throw it, it out. And it just rots? Yeah. Mm. That's Well, now wait. So but they're not they're not getting rotten. No, no, no. What fruit. they're doing is they're taking they're trying to like take that food that would just go to waste. Like you're saying like uh that the grocery store would throw out. Exactly. Or so, okay, okay, gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, cuz like, I remember when Mark worked at the stores he worked in produce and the amount of stuff they threw away. Oh, I bet it's astronomical. Oh, I'm sure because people don't like produce that looks unappetizing. Yes. It's just as good. I know. I know. It's silly. If you cut it up into a bowl, yeah. no one will ever know that that tomato. Had exactly. A spot yeah. on that it was, it yeah, that it was like oddly shaped or whatever. Or like yeah. the, the reason why I have about 50 frozen bags of kale in my freezer at home because I did a co-op. And they gave us so much kale, and there's only so much you can eat. I know. Yeah. I know. What are you going to uh, do with all that kale? Take it to this. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, there you go. The fresh stuff, man. I mean, it's worth it's worth supporting the Gleaning Project. They do quite sure. a bit of mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah, I was just curious as to why they use the word rescue. I didn't understand, but now that makes sense. Save the veggies. <laughs> Yeah, right. We got to wear red ribbons or something yes. so that we green man, yeah, green veggie wearing. Oh yeah, green. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else you got there, Beth? Beth, Beth, for, ladies and gentlemen, she's she's learning the news as she's reporting it right now because she didn't have it. She had a busy day, right? You had a busy day, a lot I going had on. The dumbest day. The dumbest day. That's what I said. You had a stupid day. And uh, there you go. And so thank you to Cindy and to Debbie and to all those who have printed off and sent me articles because mm -hmm. otherwise you wouldn't have any news tonight. That's right. It's a, it takes a village to deliver the news. Yes. And as Cindy... And now, all the news 
news that's fit to print and a good deal that's not with AG Today's lead anchor, Bethany Yingling. That's me. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pull that one. That's me. That's me. All right, go ahead. What um, else? As Cindy posted on the Addressing Gettysburg's Business Network. You scorpion woman! <laughs> Jesus. Scorpion woman. Yeah. You said um, there me. is a living library. <laughs> living library. Is this po- through you, Cindy, or is this something separate? This is just from the library. This is the library. Okay. The Living Library. Um, meet the books. And this is on Monday, April 22nd. At 6 p.m. on the Gettysburg Library's third floor. The YMCA Gettysburg and the Adams County Library System have gathered human books. They have in quotes. Human books. To be checked out by readers for 30-minute conversations during the week of April 22nd through the 27th. Join us for an opportunity to engage in conversation where individuals share their unique life experiences and perspectives. Books will be available for checkout during the week, and they will be held at various times and branch locations throughout the county. Did the books so confuse you, or the, the humans human, confuse you? Human books <laughs> confuse me. What yeah. are so instead of taking out a book. A physical book. A physical book. Yeah. You, you go and you pick a person, and it starts conversations. You know, like somebody who is a veteran, or somebody who is a nurse, interesting. or somebody who has had a very interesting life experience. So, like, like oral history type of exactly. Stuff. Oh, that's really cool. But you get you get the you get to hang out with them for thirty minutes. Yeah, and it's it, like speed dating, but it's sort like of speed dating. But you not. get to learn something new that kind of takes you out of your comfort zone. Kind so of, it's all it's all disturbing stories. No, no, no. But oh. like, if you're not if you don't know much about you know history, firefighting. I okay. don't know. You can. Mm-hmm. Check out somebody who is a firefighter and talk to them. I wonder if our friend uh, Jeremy McNear is going to go there with his firefighter mustache and talk about that. We should get him to go. Oh, that's right. He shaved it. Well, he might be growing it back. I haven't seen him in two weeks. They just crawl back on as far as I've noticed. (laughs) (laughs) The mustaches do? (laughs) Shave them off. (laughs) They they crawl back like a caterpillar. (laughs) Okay. And um, World War I weekend at Eisenhower National Historic Site. Now, this is very exciting. On the weekend of May 4th and 5th, the National Park Service will host an interactive living history displays with exhibits and programs exploring the American experience in World War I. So they're going to partner with a bunch of different groups, such as the East Coast Doughboys, the United States Marine Corps Historical Company, United States Naval History and Heritage Command, and the Paul Mall Doughboys. Mm-hmm. Um and they are going to have free exhibits and living history and things like that. But this is open to the public from 10 a.m. through 4 p.m. on Saturday and 10 a.m. through 3 p.m. on Sunday. So if any of you are aware of their their really awesome World War II weekend, they are trying to also do a World War I weekend, focusing on Eisenhower's contributions to our local area during yeah. World War I. And that's uh, the, the, the Eisenhower is really something that um, doesn't get enough attention mm-hmm. as far as I'm concerned. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll do some things to uh, bring more light or shed more light on the Eisenhower, yep. what they do there. We had Dan Vermilia on. Isn't uh, he great? Yeah, he was, he's very good. And we talked about Camp Cult. And I might bump that up. Um, on the Patreon uh, yes, episodes, please. yeah, and um, so it's just there's just so much history here, and it's just As so a patron, fascinating. I'm asking you. Okay, so all right, fine. I will grant your requests. <laughs> It'll be next week. I will bump it <laughs> next week. Uh, no, but it is really good. Like, and he's yeah. he's such a good mm-hmm. storyteller. Like, he's just he, he knows what he's talking about, and he's he's just got a way. And they have a team over there now at Eisenhower that I ha- like. It's a grouping of people that. They have since I've started working for the foundation, they've not really had before of just like a bunch of people who are really passionate. It it they're not at Eisenhower because they couldn't get in at Gettysburg. Mm-hmm. You know, they are passionate right. about yeah. all things Eisenhower. And they really, really, really want to bring that passion to the public. And so they did the Easter egg roll this past um, Easter, and it was fabulous. And so now they're adding to their events with a World War One weekend. And if you haven't met Eva, she's their new. Um, well, she's not new. I mean, she is their like uh, events person. 
I almost said activities director. She's got beautiful energy. She just just, explodes with enthusiasm. And you just want to be a part of it. Okay. And she's fantastic. But she's like 12, also 12 years old. (laughs) You know, these people aren't really 12 years old. No. You know, like we're. No, but I'm upset about the age gap. That's quickly forming. Yeah, I don't even want to hear it. (laughs) Okay. And last but not least, (laughs) if you've got a sweet tooth. Ah, sweet tooth people. They are now going to be serving hand-dipped, deep-fried desserts, Mr. G's ice cream, Philly water ice, funnel cakes, and more. The Sweet Tooth uh, Gettysburg is opening at Lincoln Social Food Market. Oh. Do not have a date yet. Cindy, do you, you know? say they're deep-frying Italian ice? Deep. <laughs> hand, <laughs> hand-dipped, deep-fried desserts. Mr. G's ice cream, Philly oh, okay. water <laughs> ice, funnel cakes, and more. Ooh. I would I would pay for that. What? I want my deep fried water. <laughs> deep fried water? Only you would Sounds do Sounds delicious. <laughs> Jamie, explain. Describe the deep fried water so I would want to eat it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How does that work exactly? Jamie, J- I don't know if I've brought this up on the podcast before, but Jamie is a very good cook. Very good. And she always goes Are out. You really? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. Really? And she goes out and she finds crazy recipes and w- always wants to try new things. Okay. And so she, um, I don't want to say inflicts, but Subjects. inflicts them on us Subjects. at Rupp House. <laughs> okay. And she Don't bring, think inflict is the word you're yeah, looking well, for. Well, it, it might be. And she brings them <laughs> to us and she'll go, I brought deep fried ice. I okay. brought chocolate cake. But it has a surprise inside. You have to tell me what the secret ingredient is. Oh, <laughs> but she describes, anchovies. She describes it to you in a way that is not appetizing. Okay. It's brown and it tastes like chocolate, but it has a really interesting texture. And I really hope you like it. But if you don't, it's kind of weird. And <coughs> it's brown and, and it you tastes don't, like chocolate. You don't want to eat it. <laughs> yeah, right. Because it doesn't. It's not. It's so, not a ringing endorsement of her own no. food. No. Yeah. And so I told her finally, like, don't describe it to me. Just give it to me. And then it would be like, ha ha, did you figure it out? It's sauerkraut. <laughs> sauerkraut and a chocolate dessert? Damn delicious. You Is it really? Know. It's like. No, you're right. You never. You're right. You're right about that. There's a lot of things. I once had, uh, I went to a restaurant and they had a hamburger with peanut butter on it. Yeah. And I was like, peanut butter? He's like, it's really good. And I got it. And it was great. Yeah. So, yeah, you're right. So you never Jamie, know. Be open Jamie, to try things. Jamie is also my um, pusher on ethnic foods. So whenever we go to somewhere together, she always goes, I make her pick the food and we go to a restaurant for different countries. Mm -hmm. And she took me to an Ethiopian restaurant. I've always wanted to try that. Fantastic. Yeah. Where? She took me to a Korean. Where were you we guys? were in Philly. We no, we were, no, I was gonna say, we were outside of D.C. We were in yeah. D.C. You have was, to go somewhere near a city like, for this stuff. Where are we going for lunch? And I went, oh, we're in D.C. They <laughs> have Ethiopia. everything. Yeah. And the only thing that we can't get, well, I mean, around here, there's nothing. But Ethiopian food is amazing. I hear that. I've never tried it's it. It's fantastic. It is the mo- and it's an experience. It's more than just just like... Do you eat with your hands? Is that yeah. you're yeah. grabbing your fingers? You use yeah. the injera bread and you actually like basically are eating with your fingers. Fingers and yeah. it's like using a napkin and you can eat the napkin. It's like the best thing ever. Yeah, I'd Think, love to try explaining that. Explaining things. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the, let me explain to you how she explained it to me. Okay. So the and by the, the way, bread the, comes, the longer you're taking talking I know. about Sorry, food. Sorry, I'm talking it's about killing food. Me. I know. So the the bread comes what's it called? Injera bread. Injera. Injera yeah. bread. It comes rolled up. And then you unroll it. And so she's like, it's like a bandage of skin. Uh, and you <laughs> unroll it. God. And da 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 And I was I like, never. what? Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> that's and I was, you... like, I was like, it really is. That's the way you're selling this? Yeah. She was like trying. It's like, she's like, it's like a bandage. Imagine the well, epidermis imagine... of your skin is, is, is uh, wrapped around food and you can eat it. <laughs> And now imagine now. the gangrene right oh, here. Oh, God. But yeah. it was, <laughs> you guys are so not going to want to eat after this. It was so <laughs> good. It was so good. <laughs> I can't even describe it to you. Yeah. Is that bothering you back there? Yeah, a little bit. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> anyway. <Yeah. You're> worst. <laughs> All right, what else you got in the news? She's got there? sidewalk, sidewalk conditions? conditions with Jamie. Sidewalk conditions, so. Sidewalk conditions. Oh, yeah. 
since it's been a while and since the last now, time I got cut now off. Now, did you walk here from the Spangler Farm? Not from the Spangler Farm. Where'd you walk here from? Do, can you no, not tell? Canada? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Are you? I walked about two blocks because I needed to get cat food. <laughs> 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 so I came out and about in the town and went, oh, shoot, it's Thursday. Yeah, stop by. Yeah. So you, you were like going to Kenny's? Yeah. And then you're like, I'm going to go past Kenny's and get cat food and then go back? Uh, is coming here getting cat food? Because I already did the Kenny's thing. So. Oh, you did that? Oh, yeah. okay. So All right. So you got? Did you bring the cat food with you? Are you that hungry? I'm starving. <laughs> Is it wet food or dry food? It's dry, man. Ah, forget You're it. gonna have beautiful I'll teeth wait. after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, forget yeah, it. I don't know. I'll, I'll let, leave um, it for the cat. On my venture, though, I, I have seen already at least one dog with butterfly wings walking down the sidewalk. Oh that boy, was pretty fascinating. No, well, I guess we do attract all kinds here. Yeah, it's been a. <laughs> it's getting loaded out there. There's a lot of people. Is it really? Yeah. Is what's going on? Just the weather? I mean, I was surprised. It's only, it's Thursday. And like yesterday, it was crazy last oh, night. Oh, it was so busy. Good. Mm -hmm. That's good, though. We want that. Yeah, but I've already seen the first family go across the Baltimore the Street a half a block away from the bush push button crosswalk. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Does that bother you, like, jaywalking? Yes. So, well, when you're that a family. freaking close yeah. to a yeah, and you know, and with the with the way drivers are around here, crashing into buildings and stuff, like people really should. I mean, they don't, don't know realize. this. I mean, they're taking their life into their hands. Yeah, but they don't, they don't realize. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, they're they, you can't just jaywalk in the no. middle of this town because people are not. We paying should attention. put up signs. <laughs> people hit buildings here. Yeah, you're smaller than a building. Beware. You might Bad not want to do that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They don't realize I have the keys now to a Gettysburg Foundation van. Oh boy. That can oh, hold up right. to 15 people. Wow. That thing is like party time. Coming down the road and now I'm like <laughs> feeling like I'm driving a <laughs> Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Huge thing. So, so people now look how, so small. We have down there. you have pointed out the <laughs> treachery of the sidewalks before yeah. and are have you found that they've improved in any way anywhere? Or are they still treacherous? They've improved by leaps and bounds on about Half a block up at the seminary. Oh, really? Where they completely tore it out and they redid by the schmucker. Well, that's good news. But that's the only place I've seen diddling uh. <laughs> I've done in this town when it comes to sidewalks. Do you think? Um, do you think maybe you would one day run for office on the platform of Better you know sidewalks. improving sidewalks? I would vote for you. Yeah, vote Jamie, your candidate for sidewalks. Do you have crickets? I don't. <laughs> I would totally I should have crickets. You. Jamie, I'm oh, trying to get her to apply time. to be president. Love you a long time. <laughs> I'm trying to get her to be president of the foundation. Oh, yeah. That would be good. They didn't did they interview you for that? I don't think I've been nominated. Oh, you should. I be. nominated you. Yeah. yeah? What did yeah. they say? Nobody called me yet. They're not going to be calling anybody yet. No. Oh. I declare That's, you know Bankruptcy! <laughs> they have to do all the other interviews to make it look legit. Yeah, before yeah. they, they interview hand you. Hand me the position. Yeah. That's probably true. Uh, <laughs> all right, any, anything else on the sidewalks? On the sidewalks, nothing other than the fact that I did see my very first fast pullover and somebody pump, pop their head out and throw up on the sidewalk. Oh, nice. It's oh, 4 so somebody... o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> So legit. Yeah, there you go. You can Sorry, finally use Debbie. that one. <laughs> she took Remem her Remember, off. I do not have a toddler at home. Oh, <laughs> so you're not used to this yet. Oh, yeah. that's so Do you want to borrow Ezra? And all yeah, four of their all, all four of the friends in the car all are just laughing hysterically. Oh, it, poor guy poor, was just, oh, just drunk. Had too much fun somewhere. Oh, that's at four in the afternoon. Good for him. Good On for him. On a Thursday. Him. Yeah, well, hey, nice. better late than never. Nice. 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 Not All right. Nice. All right. That's it. You got anything else? Nope. No, I just want to talk more about food so that you can't. <laughs> no, let's not do that. I had lunch. Oh my God. I had Dolly. lunch at four. Hello, Dolly. <laughs> I love Charlie. <laughs> can we just is. talk about Charlie? No, can we talk about dinner? I'm starving. What do you guys want to look? It's eight thirteen. I love you, Charlie Fennel. Oh, okay, fine. You are my favorite. Well, you can't say it because it's too small. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I oh love god. him. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, I'm I'm ready to eat. We're gonna go eat, okay? We're gonna figure so out where we're gonna talk eat. Some more what about, about nothing? Food. Fuck oh. that. All right, we're done. Come on. <laughs> You guys have yourselves a great weekend. We'll see you on the tour on Saturday. Don't forget, park where legal. Park where legal. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Go to CWI later. Bye. AG Today's opening Bye. theme is written and performed by Colin Southfield and the Mushroom Country Band. Bumper music is arranged and performed by Billy Webster and sometimes Kevin McLeod. AG Today is produced by Matt Cowery, wow. Bethany Yingling, Debbie Jones, wow. and Sydney Compton. Engineered wow. by Colby Sumner and maybe sometimes someone else. Guest accommodations are provided by the guests themselves. We'll need a couple thousand patrons to be able to put people up in hotels. Speaking of patrons, maybe you'd like to become one. You'll find plenty of perks over there, not to mention hundreds of episodes that will help you further your Gettysburg and Civil War education. So go to patreon.com slash addressing Gettysburg. I'm Huevos Grande, the voice of addressing Gettysburg. Thanks for listening. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. But it was too late. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never fight uphill, me boys. Never he said, fight uphill. wow. He said, wow. Gettysburg, wow. Wow. I got hairy legs. True international depression. But it was too late. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. Really? Oh, my gosh. You know, oh, it's devastating. <laughs> Never fight uphill, me boys. <laughs>